Okay. Uh, so we begin. Uh, you three, the uh, uh, two halflings, Rakul, Cillian, and Degar, and uh, Degar, the dwarf, uh, are traveling into Flingdenstone. Flingdenstone. The, uh, the old ruined city that is recently being reclaimed by the gnomes who once inhabited it. Uh, you are bringing a supply crate in order to make some swift cash. Um, and you have spent every dollar you've had on on, uh, on getting these supplies, so you are, you're quite in... Uh, if, if you can't make this deal, you're going to be in uh, quite a bit of debt. Um, or, or Dagar will in fact drink the rest out. Um, drink you out of business. Um, so as you guys were going, you, uh, you found your own way to the city, uh, using, uh, old maps and old way, uh, old, uh, what's the word, uh, old paths that, um, that you found in, in various libraries and, and bookstores and the like. And, uh, eventually you got up to the, uh, to an area that hauled up, that designed for hauling up carts. Um, so you attached, uh, you, you rang a... Uh, rang a bell that you heard cascade up this long and steep um, steep uh, slide and uh, attach your cart and you began to see the chain start to move uh, and it continued on for some time and eventually you reached the top so are uh, you guys kind of just riding this as it goes along uh, yeah I'm just gonna let it go no point in running up there <laughs> Eventually, you see this little uh, halfling. He's uh, he's basically carrying, the, pr pulling the thing up. Thanks for the ride, little buddy. <laughs> you see him. He he appears to be struggling just because it's such a. He's been doing it all day. Um, eventually, you guys get to the top, and and uh, Dagar quickly un unhooks the machine. Uh, you know, the machine stops pulling, and you just see him start getting really tired and just out of breath. <clears throat> what do you guys do? I'm gonna get off the cart. Cool. Uh, yeah, Rickle hops off the cart. The Silly and Digger all do the same. Uh, you look over here, and you see uh, you see there's a lot of dents in the wall, as if carts kept ramming against it. Um, there's a small, uh, there's a small warning sign and some red striped tape uh, in order to lead you into not ramming against the wall. I'm just gonna start moving forward. Cool. See what's uh, uh, around the corner. Um, unfortunately it's quite dark. Um, Rickul, you oh, actually man. have, no, um, Sicilian actually has an item on him that can help him. Yeah, I'll, uh, take out that lantern. Sweet. Uh, so... One of you is now holding a light source. That's silly. And I'll creep around that corner. Cool. Uh, you see a, a cart. It seems to have some massive damage on its side. As well as you can... Oof, you can see some descending stairs, which seem to go for uh, for a long, long time. You're, uh, you're pretty happy you took that route instead of the route you took. And that route, that route instead of... Um, you're happy you, you took the slide instead of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna approach these other guys that are over here by this cart. Cool. Uh, you see, uh, some of them appear to be guards, other appears to be merchants. I'm gonna ask them how we get our, or what we do with our cart now that's at the top of the slide. Uh, um, um join them? Kind of like hang back at the cart still? I think I'm gonna. Sure, uh, you can you can pull the cart with you if you want. You have you have superior strength to do it. I I will pull the cart with me slowly around the corner. Sure, Big sure. Uh, give give me a strength check. Yeah, be extra careful right. with that. We don't want to lose all our cash. So deep, yeah. So fourteen. Yeah, you you manage, you, you you find it actually is really difficult to avoid the wall, but um at a certain point you just kind of lift up the cart on one side and just drag it through. Awesome. What a dwarf. <laughs> um, so you see these guys kind of, they kind of say, uh, they point towards this area here and say, uh, the city is through there. Hmm. Through this big door? Yes, through those massive iron gates. Uh, th th they say that beyond that is the, uh, uh, what's the word? 
um, is the make is the great maze. Um, you might require a guide. Which one of you guys wants to lead us through the maze? <laughs> Um, you see these merchants kind of peck up and they kind of say, yo, we've actually been, we've gone through it before, uh, we're going to go through there now, or in a little while anyway, um, depends on how much you want to pay us. I'm going to ask my group if we want to pay them. <laughs> oh, can we... Are, are they just... willing to accept food as payment? Uh, some they, of the them? shitty wine. You, you <laughs> see them look wine. look at each other and they kind of nod and say, "Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll take uh we'll take trade." Oh, okay. I was gonna threaten them because that works. I too. was gonna say you could just intimidate them. <laughs> do, you, do you want to just intimidate them? <laughs> why don't, why don't we, I do not I, want I, to. I think we'll just go ahead and share a little bit. Give them the crappy stuff. Yeah. yeah. How big is the hog? Uh, I don't know, actually. I, I heard him say it once, and I'm like, okay, cool, hogshead. I did it Google, I, and it said 56 gallons, so it's pretty much a keg. Okay, yeah, so it should be like a keg. Okay, I like hogshead. <laughs> cool. So, do you guys want to offer him part of the hogshead of cheap wine for uh, nice. leading us through this labyrinth of whatever it is? They're little folks, that'll, that'll do. <laughs> There you go. Get them good and sloshed. Cool. But they can't have it till after they lead us through. We don't want to get lost. Right. Um. Yeah. Uh, one. One. Uh. Single guy leads you through. Uh. The rest stay here with their cart. They appear to be packing to leave. Um. You don't know why they said that they were going up. So uh, they start to lead you through. As these doors open, you see there's a there's a single guard on the other side, and uh, you begin to travel through. Yeah. I'm just gonna pull the cart as we go. Yeah, you can um, go, right, yeah. Yeah, I got go it. Go <laughs> Now, um, during while you were going, um, Cillian, uh, you notice and you notice that your teammates don't really notice that kind of during this labyrinth, you're going left and right and right and left. You actually notice a treasure chest off the distance, just past the corner. Can I investigate it? Uh, sure. It's it's kind of about twenty feet off. It's it's off the path that the the um, gnome's leading you. I'm just gonna. I'm just I'm gonna. gonna safe to I stick with the, the the guide. Cool, cool. Uh, so you kind of ignore the uh, all that possible treasure. Eventually, you get to the other side. Uh, yep, you get back to there. Uh, I'm just gonna give you guys control over the car here. There you go. Yeah, now Dagar can move the car with him. Oh, you Dagar. Uh, so the gnome kind of stands there and he says, "Okay, there we go. He got you across." And he kind of holds his hands out as if to receive some sort of prize. Nice high five. His face kind of <laughs> sours, and he kind of says, "Come on, give it to me." Uh, do you have anything to hold some wine in, little buddy? He says, "You said I get the whole keg." Oh, I thought I said part of it. I don't. I don't remember saying that. Yeah, pretty sure that wasn't a bigger. Hey, there's only one of them, Dagar. Why don't you give him a little uh, few choice words? Yeah, you might as well <laughs> just scare them off. Well, I don't think we... <laughs> Actually, don't we don't want to make... want to piss all of them off at once. We don't yeah. want to make enemies of people them. in the city because that's... we need to sell all this stuff, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a bad idea. Alright, let's not give do them... that. Let's just give him the whole thing. Hey. Okay, well... He's gonna end up trying to carry it back to the labyrinth, and he's uh... gonna get tired and die. <laughs> so, so, what do you do there, Digar? So we come back... <laughs> um, I guess we just... Go ahead and give him the cheap stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, so uh, you take off your your hogs of wine. It's probably only about like one tenth of your total cash earnings, and um, you you give it to this guy, and he uh, uh, he happily starts rolling it away into the back of the maze. I'm sure he does. Sure he does. <laughs> I'm and uh, some stuff under my breath about how we didn't say the whole keg. <laughs> 
Uh, and Cillian starts, uh, he starts <laughs> lighting the way, and you guys can see, um, this way as you go. Gonna follow the guy to the light. Cillian, lead the way. Is a good idea. Oh man, he's quick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't Hurry up with that card. my character. Oh, who can? Digar? <laughs> you, you can now. Digar, yeah. I... It's gonna be a tight space getting that card through okay. here. I... Well, I can pull it through. Not that I was gonna help you or anything, it's all you, Digar. Oh, oh I, didn't, I didn't expect you to. Is that water up on the left? Uh, yep. As you approach, water, huh? you see the thriving city of Blingenstone. Uh, gnomes go from have, uh, fro and hither and back and forth. Uh, you look up and you can see that these uh, these walls and columns go up hundreds of feet into the air, uh, and you, you, you can't even see the top of the roof of where you are right now. It's so high. Um, you could see them uh, working to to restore their home. Just uh, you take a step in. You can see barricades and and guards set up, as well as paths leading off into the distance. Um, so I'm just gonna at this point I'm just gonna make Steven up here um, already in the city. Uh, Steven, are you there? Okay, uh, yeah, I can barely hear you. You're a little bit quiet. Um, so what kind of character do you want to play? Up there with oh, me. perfect. Uh, what kind of character do you want to play? I honestly couldn't care less. Whatever helps you out most as a ref. Um, okay, let me just grab some here then. Uh, I'm fine I've been gaming for about 30 years, D&D specifically, so there's not really a lot I haven't played. Nice. If you want to throw me something complicated, feel free. If you want to throw me something simple, feel free. Uh, we, they, could probably use a, they could probably use a cleric. I'll, I'll throw you a cleric. Aha! Um, a mountain dwarf Sounds cleric. Sounds like it's your favorite. No, it's just you can have a lot of fun with a cleric. <laughs> What's your name gonna be there? Oh, let's see. Uh, cleric, dwarven cleric. Did you see? Uh, yep, dwarven cleric. Uh, let's have I guess. Calabar. K e l a b a r. Uh, can you say it again? Calabar. K e l a b a r. Calabar. Calabar. I'm gonna have to remember how crap this microphone is. <laughs> There he is. Hey. Uh, you guys can see a uh, a dwarfish fellow. Um, I'm just gonna put in your stats there, buddy. If you look in the handout, you will see them under your name, Calabar. I probably spelled it wrong the second time, but it doesn't matter. Uh, can be in all people. Uh, boom. Yep, you will be able to see your uh, the equipment you have on you and uh, the spells you have. <laughs> Kalahabard. Kalahabar, whatever. <laughs> Close enough, right? That would be on yeah. the end. Be nice, not a bard. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of difference it makes in the game will be little. <laughs> hey guy, what are you doing way over there? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happened. <laughs> I, I've hurt players for doing stuff like that, just so you know. When my, one of my players was mauled by a bear, 
because he did oh, that. It, I mean, it looked like Dagar teleported into a wall. <laughs> that, um, was, that, was, that was my bad. <laughs> uh, Sale must be getting to me. <laughs> so, uh, Kelivar, um, as the as the director and sole member of the uh, no, uh, not Nomagon, of the Blinden Stone uh, Welcoming Committee. Uh, you feel it's your duty to greet these people and welcome them to the city. <laughs> what do they look like? Uh, well, they look like, uh, they, they look like a bunch of gypsies, really. Uh, it's a <laughs> barbarian, a witch doctor, and uh, what appears to be a thief. Uh, they come in here... Exactly, they're scruffy, their clothes are kind of kind of rotten, and they're just carrying just a, just a buttload of, As of ale. As he's at us, I like, pull a little bug out of my hair and throw it on the floor. <laughs> This yeah. looks like a bunch of guys that are going to need a guide. <laughs> they, very much so, yes. Oh, it, okay. it's, give, give, give them a few seconds in the city and they'll end up robbed and dead. <laughs> Which is surprising because they're mostly gnomes in the city. <laughs> There's a lot of gnomes though. Yeah, okay, so things to know about the city. First of all, short jokes not appreciated. Avoid them. <laughs> uh, but given that I don't actually know much about the city, I can't really fill in. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, he, he he starts describing the city. He says that um, there's a lot of issues with uh, with orc orc ratings. Um, we, there there once was a uh, a small undead problem. Um, unfortunately, clearing that seemed to backfire because now the orcs are really attacking hard. It seems that the undead were scaring them off a bit. Um, so, so that's definitely been a concern of late. Well, certainly a money-making opportunity for three, um, people, such as yourselves. Yeah, we get to kill something? Orcs? Ah. Sweet. Yes. Actually, we're more interested in selling Glinda Stone some Whoa, 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 whoa. Wine. I want to kill things, too. <laughs> <laughs> How well? That's important. Trade. You're in the right city for that. Nothing the people of the city like doing more than trading. There we go. So give them directions to the local trade center. Cool. Um, you, yes. you, you, you want to lead them there, or would you like to just give them directions to it? I can do that. I have no objection to learning a bit of pocket money today. Cool. Uh, you guys begin uh, weaving away this way. Should point out, by the way, I'm getting a completely blank screen on. Oh, I'm sorry. I will drag you to your character. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Thank you. No problem, buddy. Yeah, you, you guys really have to say that beforehand, because I was, I was thinking, why is this character standing still? He should be approaching them. <laughs> well, like I said, this, this is literally my first time using D20, so... I'm... Oh, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, you should be able to click and drag and carry your ca uh, take character around. Um, so, do you want to lead the way with your light, or lead the way with uh, Calabar with your light? Yeah, follow him. This is going to look at Calabar's character and put his uh, AC and HP in 11 and 14. <clears throat> cool. Excellent. Hmm. Uh, Cillian, what's your... One second, I'll put yours in. Um, AC is... Yeah, HP and AC. 15. 15 and 8, wow. You're going to die in one shot. <laughs> <Great. clears throat> Oh, I'd completely forgotten about Thacko being reversed. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, so he starts point leading you this way uh, towards a uh, market where you might be able to trade this stuff for. Uh, as I'm going, I'm going to try and gauge. Well, they're poor. <laughs> Clearly. Oh yes, uh, very much so. Uh, you you uh, look on them, and you you kind of can smell uh, precious metals, and you 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 just smell nothing on them. Right. You you you, you, you think they have guys. you think they have nothing on them. Just can't smell it over all of the booze. So these chairs creaking. It sounds like they're in a boat. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> yeah, uh, he continues to lead you northward. Uh, this way. Oops. 
Dagar trying desperately to keep. <laughs> it's tough. I'm pulling a whole cart. <laughs> Gosh, slow down, guys. <laughs> These guys clearly could not even afford a horse. <laughs> hey, horses are expensive where I come from. Um, I'm testy. <laughs> just having the, the the poor dwarf drag the whole cart along. Is um is he okay doing that on his own? Uh, oh, he, yeah. he, oh, he appears to be quite fine. stout. I'm fine. I don't know. What you, don't. Yeah, I'm fine. Worst comes to worst, he'll take a tip off of one of the gallons of wine and be good to go. <laughs> I'm just not I, sure uh, if your light fixes a hernia. Pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. I definitely didn't already do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so definitely all is still there. Nothing to worry Excellent, about. Excellent, because it's all our money. <laughs> Cool. Uh, you come into this area and you can see it appears to be being uh, rebuilt. Uh, piles of wood lie, in, uh, lie on the side, and uh, you can hear carpenters smash a uh, nail against the board um, as they are rebuilding this uh, the structure of this part of the city. So, uh, are yeah, you familiar with this place? Uh, he's he's been here before, but. He's been here before, but he's never actually um, explored or spoken to anyone here. Um, I want to ask one of the gnomes that are around here what happened if they're rebuilding it because it broke, or if they're just building it up. Um, they are they are rebuilding it because this place has been abandoned for over a hundred okay. years. Okay. Uh, if you kind of look, you can see clearly the difference between the uh, the old wood and the new wood. So uh, just the general part of the reclaiming of Glindestone. Blinden Blindenstone. As in, like, bling, bling. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, where is this going on here? Cool. Uh, yep, you see what appears to be a, uh, a foreman here, as well as several guards and, and people rebuilding things. Guards? I'll go ask one of those guards, uh, what exactly they're guarding against? Uh, most likely orcs. Oh. Are there orcs nearby? Wanna Don't kill, kill some. Guy. I wanna kill some, where are they? <laughs> we, we ha can we ask where they are? I wanna go kill something. Um, sure, uh, this guy kind of approaches you. Um, cause he, he, he see you guys kind of carrying in this large, these large casks. And uh, he, he asks you um, who you are and, and your purpose. Oh, uh, do, uh, do excuse us, we're just passing through. Uh, these gentlemen, they're on their way to sell, I'm guessing, this cart. Uh, you see yeah. the guy start looking at the cart up and down and says, Well, I, I could scrap it for wood, I, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get rid of this alcohol first. Yeah, yeah we kind of have to empty it first. We need to sell this. He he says, "Uh, you, you want to talk to me then?" Okay. Uh, okay then. We have uh four kegs of ale and some fine wine. We're looking to sell it. Uh, are you in any interested in buying that? You see him kind of shrug and say, "Well, I don't know. Depends on what the, what kind of price you're going for. What are you looking for?" I don't well, know. I'm not seeing just... any more ale around here, so. I mean, it looks like this is about all you're going to get for a while. So, I mean... Yeah, but, I mean, they're probably pretty poor because they're trying to rebuild an entire city. So we should give them a fair price. This is, like, I guess this is true, but, I mean... Like, you know. 20 gold? <laughs> you, you seem kind of shrug and say, oh, I, Okay, I, I, could, I could do some trade. And you seem kind of go under here, under the table, and he, he takes out two big sacks. You see they're filled with some kind of spice. Spice? What kind of spice hmm. do you have there? Uh, he claims to be salt. Claims. Oh. <laughs> we could I ask could test that. to taste it. <laughs> Wait a he, second. What do you mean? He offers you a sample of salt. Go I, for I it, don't know. Um, Get him, Dagar. <laughs> I, I I'm going to I'm going to test it then. Cool. Uh, you you take a take a lick, and it appears to be salt. It's very fine grain. Oh, um, it most is indeed salt. Most yeah. likely mined from somewhere around here. Okay then. Well, looks it's, like this is actually salt. I'm not, I'm not a uh, 
a connoisseur when it comes to spices, but uh, is salt worth alcohol? Uh, well, enough of it is. <laughs> salt a sack? Is How big of a sack is he holding? Uh, it's like about a 20 pound sack. Salt's been a major, major trading thing since yeah. before we had cash. Okay. Yeah, spice in general is, is the I spice to, trade. I used to use, sp I used to use um, a little of salt instead of money. Perfect. Yeah, salt is like huge. Or at least it used to be. So, so Degar, you think that salt's cut with anything, or is it uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty straight? I, think I'll, I, I might find out soon. I mean, we could wait, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> oh, uh, I kind of want to go kill something. So, yeah, this, I, this, I, this, I, this guy, this guy. This guy assures you that it's um it's purest and finest salt we have. Um, yeah, I just well. point out that salt. Well, it's nice and handy to have, but wine will get you drunk. <laughs> true. Is true, but I'm not looking to get drunk. I don't know. Dagar might be. Um. Uh, yeah. Well, we should keep after some. he kills some things. We should keep some. Just how much does he want of our alcohol for his uh, bag of salt? Uh, he, he he offers you uh, two bags for uh, for each keg, and for each uh, of the kegs. Yeah, for, oh. for 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 each keg, and then another two two pounds for each of the um, casks of wine. Well, Degar, how much do you think you want to drink? <laughs> huh? I don't know. I've already had a little. I mean, what do you think? Should we just keep one keg of ale and one gallon of wine and sell him the rest? That sounds like a good plan. We can probably get a bit for the salt. That'll be a good start, I think. Alright, Cillian, do you agree with that? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Alright, let's uh, offer him three kegs and one of the gallons of fine wine. Uh, he accepts your offer. Uh, he hands you, um, what would that be, eight bags? Eight bags of salt. Yeah, eight bags. Okay, yeah. Cool. He hands you over the the eight bags. How big are these bags? Um, they're they're pretty large because they're like twenty pounds each. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you you kind of slap them onto the slap them on the on the back of your cart. Yeah. Uh, he 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 kind of questions um where where he came from. He's never seen uh people from the surface in a long time. Doesn't matter. We brought you ale. <laughs> you don't know, you don't want to know where it came from, buddy. <laughs> he, he he laughs and he just says, uh, he's just says he's he, he was just curious. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> uh, he, he 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 asked how long you guys have been been in the trading game. Long enough. <laughs> no. Uh, he kind of gives out a laugh and says, "Yeah, I know what you mean." Um. I was wondering, but perhaps you'd like to, uh, to do some trading for us. Well, like money's involved. Yeah, that too. He says, he says, well, I, I, I could probably uh, swing something if you, if you guys don't mean be, mind being paid in salt. So you want us to cart your material plus heavy salt all the way to the surface? He shakes his head, and says, no, no, and he kind of, he kind of motions you to get close um, as he begins speaking softly. He says there's a uh, there's an underground market just not even a day's uh, day's travel from here. Uh, you notice that it it probably took you a couple. It, yeah. Underground or just like hush hush. Uh, underground, underground. Oh uh, no, un underground is an under the earth. Okay. Uh, it took you about two weeks to get down oh, here. Oh okay. Yeah, uh, but so this one's only a day's travel, uh, which makes it a lot um, easier. Uh, he begins saying how um, to, due to the uh, the constant attacks. Uh, he kind of points southward, and he says, uh, we have men training constantly, but we don't have enough weapons for, for all of them. And uh, with, a, with a sudden influx of, of gnomes from returning to their fallen city, uh, we need more, uh, we, can, we can actually have more guards, but, um, but we just don't have the weapons for it. And, uh, and there's, this, there's a, a trading post called Mental, Mental Dereth, just, uh, just about a day's travel south of here. Um, unfortunately, they refuse to trade with the gnomes. Uh, we we do not we do not know why though. Probably because you're too short. <laughs> he he he, he, he kind of gives you an eye because he kind of puts his hat head wait um he puts his hat ha, hand on his head. It kind of 
lines it up with yours, and you can see he's a little bit taller. <laughs> Whoa! That's awkward. I'm gonna consult with Dagar since he's the uh, cart puller. And How much do you feel like he... carrying today? Yeah, see if he's interested in pulling a cart filled with weapons through an underground passage to a trading post, or from a trading post. Hmm, what if I can't guarantee all of the weapons will make it? You don't have to guarantee any of them as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't we do it, yeah. I mean, I'm fine. I got this. Cillian. Hey, if he's pulling, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> You could help, you know. Yeah, well, I was actually going to ask if I could sit in the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> in fact, if you try to do that, I will have to tackle you. Terrible. <clears throat> Don't right. even try. Well, I mean, I say yes. I'm in favor of uh, helping this guy with his trading needs. He, uh, he says that um, in case you wanted more... Than just um, just salt's payment. You can actually, you you will be able to trade for more while there. Okay. Actually, yeah. I, uh, if I might make a suggestion. Yes. Oh. We could travel further in to the market, and find out what the going rate for salt is. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. We might be able to get rid of it here instead of have to pull it to the surface. At least get a better idea of the value you're getting for your booms. I think that True. might be a good yeah. idea. Yeah. He, he nods. He says you you could you could definitely get a you could probably get a a couple of ounces of gold for uh, one of these bags. Hmm. Um, wait. Um. What's the? I'm just saying it'd be nice to find out. We can definitely do that rather than end up with a ton of salt and nothing else. Calabar, um, you're you're familiar with the area. Do you know this guard? Is he like? Is he reputable? Is he? Is he trustworthy? Uh, in all fairness to the gentleman. He seems like a nice chap, but I don't tend to frequent dumps like this unless I can absolutely avoid it. <laughs> Alright, well then, I'm gonna put a pause on my previous statement and say that we should listen to Kelabar's advice and go investigate the price for ourselves. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a bad idea. Because I don't want to end up with I'm saying it's not a good idea so. to travel off and do stuff, I'm yeah. just saying you know, profit. Yeah. Uh, this guy here says that um, each of these um, each of these uh, bags of salt, the uh, these ten pan ten pound bags, probably worth about like five hundred silver coins. Uh oh, he's getting kind of antsy. He's really pushy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's, he's you know just <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of giving you off the uh, <laughs> of the going right, just so you know. Yeah. You know what? I think I'll I think we should just trust him. Let's do it. Let's agree to trade salt in service for Dagar pulling weapons filled with, or carts filled with weapons. <laughs> I'm sure Dagar okay. has the exercise. Well, he, he, he gives you a nod and says, uh, now I don't necessarily trust you, but unfortunately I can't send any... I don't trust any, you either, bud. I can't send any <laughs> men with you to make sure you, you don't just run off with the stuff. I think you could. Uh, I, if I do, then somebody might see them, and if they see them, then they'll uh, they'll know you're with us. Well, since we don't really know this underground train very well, I'd say you're pretty safe that we aren't going to run off very far. If we, we might not make it, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you sure you don't want to send someone? <laughs> he says that. I, I wish I could. Yeah, it looks like you've already got someone uh, eyeballing our cart over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He uh. He make he 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 makes sure to tell you uh to to don't te to not tell anyone that you're doing this on the behalf of Blingdenstone, because the uh they, they will they'll just start cut you out right right there. Oh. Yeah. Well, he okay, says uh he he says uh they 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 work up three uh three covenants while uh while in the mental duress. You're sure don't... that you don't know why they don't want to trade with you. He he, he says uh, uh not to my knowledge. He says um uh. The Drow are prominent members within the uh, Mental Dureth, and they were the ones who attacked us a uh, hundred years ago. So it might be uh, they they just don't like us, and they're trying to keep us down. Oh, that's, Fair that's enough. But, uh, cool. he, he raises his three uh, three in uh, he raises three fingers into the air, and he says uh, there are three rules in Mental Dureth. 
don't steal, and he looks at, um, he looks at you there, um, what's your name? Uh, Rec- no, cool. Uh, Cillian. Alright. Uh, he says, don't steal, and then he looks at, uh, Degar and says, don't disguise mm-hmm. good. Don't disguise goods as anything they aren't. And then he looks at Rakul and says, and no the use of magic. <laughs> Uh, the the, yeah. the last the last yeah. guy who the last guy who betrayed them uh well, last guy who uh, broke a covenant was thrown into the river or bound and thrown into the river. Oh well, they guys used to being bound. <laughs> <laughs> hey now, he says the uh the, the trading post just sits sits uh, about a day and a half away or two days travel away, uh just south of here. A, uh, he says there's a, there will be a gate, and the gate's password is going to be, it kind of, kind of brings you close to in quiet so it says, it says it's going to be Malastros. Do you have that? Malastros. Uh, yeah. Malastros. Write it down. Somebody write that down. <laughs> Malastros? Malastros. Gotcha. Do not mess this up, please. That... The getting that uh that password cost an incredible amount. Yeah, and again, the, the name happen? of this. Oh, sorry, but what? Today, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> the name well, of the trading post <laughs> was uh, what was it again? Uh, mental, me- yeah, mental Dereth. Excellent. Well, guys, so, yeah. You're right. I did. I am uh, all for this little mission. I think we should help this dude out. Okay then. Sounds cool. good. Uh, you Take see him. <laughs> this guy, this guy turns around and starts snapping for uh, some of these guys to come over, and they start loading your cart with uh, with more supplies. Uh, you see him pack about uh, about a dozen bags of salt, in addition to three small chests. Now uh, he tells you that the chests each contain uh, e- each one of these chests hold ten gems, and each uh, each of them about there. They're um, they're about twenty, so about two hundred fifty silver each. I'm gonna go over to one of the chests and pop it open. And make cool. Sure. Yeah, if you you look inside, you see it's uh, these chests are very small, uh, but it's kind of got kind of like a leather, not leather, uh, kind of like a silk interior, and the gems are just kind of nicely laid out inside. All right, I look over at the guy and then look back at the group and give him a little nod. <laughs> Come back over. <laughs> did you did you put it back down or are you still holding it? Oh. Yep. I'm gonna <laughs> close that chest back up. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, he asked if there's- if, is there anything else you guys think you need to know? So, you're giving us 12 bags of salt and these gems, and that's the full payment? Or that's just half, right? We're gonna get another half on the way back. <laughs> um, he, he kind of- he- he takes some, uh, he says you, you guys are smart. You guys are good traders. I bet you could. Uh, I bet you could make money easily just from uh, trading up. <laughs> Clearly, you don't know us very well. <laughs> he kind of gives us a smile. It's very well. And he, he 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 throws another uh, bag of salt on. He says that's your payment. Excellent. There we go. So we're at thirteen bags plus the eight from the original one. Well, uh, so that's. Actually, he, he threw another another bag. Uh, one, yeah, one bag's fine. Never mind. Uh, so yeah. So a total of twenty-one bags of salt right now. Um. So you just did twelve plus. Yeah, one yeah. It would be twenty-one bags of salt, uh, three cases of gems, and uh, one cask of ale. You got those. One keg of ale and one gallon of fine wine. Cool. Okay. And you guys it's begin traveling. Not a gallon anymore. Okay, one uh, <laughs> partial gallon. Uh, have, have you been drink? Have you been drinking from it, uh, Dagar? It's a Dagar gallon. Cool. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. Okay, cool. Um, give me a Constitution saving throw with advantage because you're a dwarf. Oh, uh, it's gonna crash our cart into the wall. How much is that gonna be? Um, it's just gonna be one d twenty plus. Uh, I think your Constitution's two, so plus two. Plus two. Uh, yeah, advantage means you get a roll twice to take the higher result. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so 13. Um, so you've been drinking for a while. Uh, you feel great, and the alcohol actually makes you feel strong. So you get some temporary hit points. Uh, I'm going to roll 1d6. Uh, plus your con. Uh, you get 8 additional hit points. Oh yeah, there we go. 
for a drink. Oh, good over here. Oh, because that's just how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get going. I, I got this. To make himself a better dwarf. <laughs> Okay, uh, so you guys begin traveling. Uh, he, he sends a man to uh, lead you out of the city. Uh, he, they, they give you a small map with re which relays how to get to Mental Um, in a, yeah, uh, they, they lead you back through the, uh, the small gate, and they attach you to the chain to, to go back downstairs again. Uh, can you guys just gather up right here? I'm gonna copy you and Whoa. drag you. Yes. Now then, uh, gentlemen. <clears throat> yes. It strikes me that you're going to be doing a lot of traveling through dangerous lands with a cart full of valuable stuff that, and I can't stress this highly enough, I now know about. So. What's your point? My question is this. How much am I getting and what do I have to do to get it? You're not going to die. <laughs> no, no. How much am I getting? Well, I mean, we what just got we just got the gems. We got twenty-one sacks of salt. Calabar has been friendly to us so far. We'll give him one sack of salt. Yeah. How about the... <laughs> Actually, so I'm doing all the pulling, so I'm gonna get the most I'm of this. More of a, I'll go with you. Make sure you don't die. Oh, you're already coming with us. <laughs> yeah. okay. You have to come with us, sir. <laughs> we'll tie you up and put you in the cart if we have to. <laughs> oh, bless you, gentlemen. The above lands, they must be so very different to down here. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's all settled. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll put a pin on it for now. <laughs> Yeah. Kill might kill us. <laughs> uh, he'd have to kill me. I don't know if he's going to manage to do that. Does Feeling pretty good over here. Feeling pretty good. <laughs> I am very, very good at watching from a distance. Okay. Um, Calabar knows, uh, knows some places around. He knows where to get items and, and things of that nature. Uh, is there anything you guys think you should pick up before you leave? Uh, not that you have any silver to buy it with, though. Well, we so have we'll uh, this salt that we exactly. You, so you can go through. You can go through. Uh, you can barter with people if you like. But is there anything you think you'd like to pick up before you leave? Maybe, uh, um, maybe some some more lanterns. Yeah, that could be useful. I mean, having only one person with a light might be dangerous. Yeah. Well, I mean, I won't be holding it because clearly I'm. How how long did you say this trip should be taking? Uh, to this outpost. To this uh. Trip? It would be a few days. Um, Cillian, 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 uh, you guys should have rations on you if you don't okay. already. Um, but uh, if not, you guys can yeah, basically. You cart full of beer. You cart full of beer <laughs> and uh, yeah, what's the word? And good. salt. Beer and salt. Yeah, we'll get really dehydrated and we'll all just pass out in the cart. Thank <laughs> <Yeah>. Mr. Champions. <laughs> no. Uh, but it would be smart. Uh, what was that? So we got all this beer and salt. Let's pick up some lime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perhaps you get that. Get some of that from the. Uh, from get to the market. So die die we'll happy of dehydration and not have scurvy. Great. <laughs> okay. Be okay. Uh, as you guys are traveling down, you get to about. You get about here. Uh, when you are stopped by a small uh, woman, uh, she's a small gnome woman, of course, and uh, you see she's just drenched in blood. Um, she uh, she doesn't appear hurt, but um, Calabar actually recognizes her re recognizes her as the local um, what's the word um, the as the local uh, medicine woman. The local what word woman? Medicine. Medicine woman. Uh, she kind of halts you as you as you come close. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna nudge Calabar and tell him he should go talk to her. Calabar, <laughs> <laughs> wow. why don't you go uh, and take a look at that little lady? 
to be honest, fella. I think it's more like more needful that you would. She's one of the few healers here around. Apart from me, obviously. <laughs> hmm. Alright, well, I'll, I'll start to get closer. I'm gonna ask Killian to stay close with his light. Well, I'm uh, ask why, why she's covered in blood. Ah, uh, she says I just I just came from the medical wards. Uh, with all the orcs we're having, a bit. with all the or <laughs> with all the orcs we're having um a lot of trouble keeping everyone healed or keeping everyone alive. Um, so I don't really get a lot of time uh, to change. Uh, she, she 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 says she notices noticed your pa uh, packs, and uh, she assumes that you're going to the trading post. We might be. What's that to you? Uh, she says uh, that uh, some, uh, often uh, gnomes are taken as slaves. Uh, she wa uh, she asked if you would be kind enough as to return some to us. She wants us to retrieve slaves. She nods and says, uh, "If you if if you could, like she kind of looks back, says, uh, I know uh, he says we need weapons, but uh, I believe we need to free our brothers and you uh, buy them back." She nods. I'm wow. Um, I don't know. We can just you know kill them. Uh, she 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 says that would be very dangerous. Mental duress. They would slaughter you. There's. Each each uh, leader has thirty men at their side. So this is the oh. same mental direct the trading post we're going to. They take yeah. gnomes as slaves. Often, yes. Hmm. She she How asked she asked to. Uh, is a slave word? Uh, she says two bags of, two bags of salt could get you a um what's his name? Uh, could get you about five slaves. Oh, that's a lot. And we like could keep one and give you four. Uh... <laughs> She says, uh, <laughs> if you could just, if you could return, um, any, um, any, no, uh, uh Snurf Neblin, which are the, which are the word for, uh, uh rock gnome. Deep yeah, deep gnomes, deep gnomes. Uh, she says, I would be very appreciative. Yeah, we can uh, us exactly. I'm gonna, what, sorry. So what's in it for us exactly? Um, she says, I, I am of poor means, and I, I cannot, uh, Provide you with any reward uh, besides my thanks. So we just should just pay some of our profits to help you out for a thank you. I don't uh, know. She shakes her head and says, "Um, she 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 wants you to instead of buying weapons, uh, to free Sniff Nebula." I'm gonna go back here with Calabar and talk to him and ask him since yes. he kind of knows her. Do you really think that we should help her, or should we just kind of? Do what we need to do. do. Do you really think we should well, be helping these known people? Um, give me a give me a history check there, Calabar. A history check. Yeah, there'll be intelligence. I I think you might actually have it as your your as a background trait. Um, it's Calabar. Uh, religion, medicine, insight. His yeah, you have history. So roll one d twenty plus four. Oh yeah, one d twenty plus one. Another intelligence. Plus one. Yeah. You're you're wise, not intelligent. Um, yeah, you um, <laughs> you remember hearing over uh, a while ago that um, Calabar detests slavery very deeply for some reason. Um, you you assume there was something in her past, but uh, you never you never ask. <sighs> yeah, uh, well, the way I see it, we've got two options. Oh, you've got two options. I'm obviously just going to help. Uh, your first option is we get the weapons and the money. Yeah, the that's a good option. The second option is we get the slaves and no money. Well, can we get I like some slaves and but some money? We do money? get goodwill with somebody who's covered in blood. The so, way I see it, money is not an option. We have to get the money. We spent everything we had to get here and do this. Yeah, no kidding. Like, I've been carrying this thing around. I am going to get some money out of this. This it has to happen. And we're going to the whorehouse. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought that goes, goes without saying. 
Well, she seems like she'd be grateful no matter what, so there's no real harm done as throwing a couple of bags of salt in the direction of some slaves. Yeah, that's what I was saying. A bag uh, or two wouldn't kill us. I, s- I and it's say... not like we could bring a hundred of them back just by ourselves anyway. I say if we're successful in our trading, and we feel comfortable bringing slaves back, we will bring some, this but is, I'm not going to promise anything. This is true, we could just try to trade around for a while, but we could just take the money and run. Kind of partial to that, though. Seems entirely reasonable to me. Um, she, she says uh, she's quite busy, she has to get back to the ward uh, before, before some other people die. She, uh, she thanks you for your time. Thanks, little lady. Alright. Well, yeah. let's, uh, continue on our way to Mental Dureth. Cool. Yeah, but all it does seem like the sort of stuff we can decide when we get there as well. Mm-hmm. This is true. We can also see if we can say, make some more trading, and then we can make a lot of money trading, and you know, might as maybe, well. Maybe we should side with the drown and tell the ref and uh, bring them some gnomes. Of course, we were playing the <laughs> If we were truly evil beings, we could just bonk a bunch of um, gnomes on the back of the head, drag them back, and say they were slaves. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> I like the way this Calabar thinks. No, 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 no. That was if we were evil. <laughs> if we were yeah. nice people. Mm-hmm. Of course. Well, now I am. Gonna play it and kill some things. Uh, let's do this there. Uh, so, what position would you guys be as you as you as you walk along these narrow passageways? Ah, I want to be near Kelabar and not in the front of anything. <laughs> well, I guess I, since I got the light, I guess I'm leading. Cool. I'm pulling the car. Oh yeah, so we never back. did go get another light, did we? No. Whoops. If Calabar uh, looks in this, if it, Calabar uh, looks in this thing, can find some. Back. Okay, so it, it absolutely burns me to do this, but if I do that, go at the front. I don't need a light source. That's true. If it does, uh, uh, do dig. you have uh, the good vision? Yeah, yeah, I'm a dwarf. Well, yeah, I'm a uh, dwarf. You you see in dark light as a dim light, so um, your your eyes still strain a bit. It really only, as long as there's a light source back there for you guys that's strong enough for you to get by. Me and Dig, that's fine. I'll stand next to Dig, I guess, in the cart. Uh, where are we? And just kind of hide not... behind us a little bit. Oh, okay. I didn't see where. Yeah, I didn't get that. There we are. Yeah. I still okay, think someone so... should want to stand behind me. I was going to say. Cart. That kind of looks like it's me at the front. And you three guys trying not to be at the back. But what it actually is, is me at the front and all three of you at the back. Yeah, I was just saying that I want to be close enough to watch the back side of the cart. Um, since no one was back here. And Killian, I figure since you have the light, you'll probably need to be near Dagar so you can see where he's pulling the thing. And Caleb said you're comfortable being in the front and kind of showing us Probably best, probably best if I do lead, to be all honest. Right. I guess I could be in the back. I don't think anything's gonna creep up behind me or anything. Cool, cool. Um, okay, so your plan, you, you guys are good with that formation? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so you guys start out, uh, you start walking for a while. Um, eventually, the, you're tired, it's been, you assume it's been about eight hours, um, so you guys feel it's, it's about time to rest. I'm, I'm fine. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Get another pinch of that rest. salt. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> uh, assume, assume this is going to be like, look like this the whole way. So just stay where you are and we'll consider that there are going to be constant movement. Okay, okay. No. Oh, once again, oh, just just stay where you are. There's no point in moving. <laughs> okay. Well, we're, well, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a rest. I'll just hop in the cart and take a nap. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, the cart's kind of uh, <laughs> be difficult, even for you. Oh. 
Alright, so your plan is to just go like that to sleep? Um, you want to go to sleep then? If we just sleep, oh no, I guess I still should stay at the back of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so you all begin to sleep. Uh, again, not to be Captain Reasonable or anything. Well, no. We are in the middle of bloody nowhere. Are we all just going to go to sleep? Isn't anybody going to eat No, we don't need a watch. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I mean, good. since it is your idea, Cal Calabar, you're oh, volunteering to go first, right? Yeah, go on then. Alright, I'll take second strike the whole time, so I'm just gonna sleep the whole time, and you guys can go over it. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> so, um... Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, um, it would be... Who's taking a second watch, then? I was. Uh, cool. Very cool. Cool. Um, during your watch, you start to see um, see some stuff in the distance. Uh, you kind of turn your light, and you, you see you see shadows kind of moving about. I see shadows moving about. Yeah. Out there. Exactly. I'm gonna get the light from Killian because he's sleeping. Cool. If I can. Yep, yeah, you, you, you get the light. Uh, I, I was assuming you already had it. You were kind of pointing towards it. Okay, and then I'll, I'll take a step forward to get closer to it so that I can hopefully see what's moving. So I'm just going to put that there. Right there. Uh, give me a perception check, please. Uh, that would be 1d20 plus your wisdom. Uh, okay, I don't, it's, I don't have a wisdom modifier. Uh, you, you definitely think it was just your imagination. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, since there's nothing there, I'm just going to go hang out on the card again. Cool. That's when someone throws some at you. Uh, 20, 20 plus 3. Cool. Uh, so you, somebody throws a javelin at you. Uh, I attempt to dodge it. Uh, yeah, you definitely attempt to dodge it. Unfortunately, um... With a 16, uh, even as you duck, it still manages to uh, slice into the side of your leg. Alright. Um, I'm gonna smack Killian a little bit to wake him up and tell him to wake up Degar and Kelabar. Cool. Alright, I'll go ahead and uh, give them both some taps on the head and get them up. <laughs> Dude, your yelling would also work. Yeah, I'll also start screaming wildly. <laughs> There's something whoa, 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 in the tunnel. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> ah. Wake up, your bum. Oh, is there something to kill? Is there something to kill? Yeah, big guy. Game time. <laughs> yes! Fine. I've been waiting for this the entire time. Yes. Now, uh, uh, you see this, uh, as you guys are, as you guys kind of wake up, you see this kind of a ragtag band uh, start attacking you. Oh, wow. uh, they're they're not very organized, uh, which is why you guys don't have. Which is why they're not surprising me very well right now. Um, <laughs> so roll me initiative. Fifteen. Oh, and isn't that plus something? Dex. Uh, plus dexterity. Yeah. Okay. So uh, well, doesn't matter for me. Oh, hey. Good job. Oh, yeah, I should have a plus three on mine, so it should be 18. Uh, you sleepy could... there, Calabar? A little bit sleepy there, Calabar? A little bit. Uh, each of you can put your, put your, oh, your own, your own, yeah, initiative in. I'm just kind of type it in there. Oh, okay. At 189, that would have been a bit high. Oof, so fast. <laughs> that would be a nice modifier, wouldn't it? <laughs> Whatever causes that. Must have been that salt, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> salt is delicious. Uh, Calabar, what'd you get? Oh, a six. Six? Cool. And, uh, Cillian, what'd you get? I believe I had a... Twelve. Twelve. Cool. Uh, so it looks like Dagger and Rickfall. 
Or Rickhole. Rickhole. Yeah. Uh, these two get to go first. Uh, Rickhole kind of pulls out this javelin out of his leg. Uh, I, I wince in pain as I pull it out because it hurts a lot. Yeah. Uh, you're, cur oh. you're currently holding a lantern in the air, pointing it towards these guys. Yes. Um, do I have to go first or can Dagar? Uh, Dagar can go first. I yeah. suppose not, I'll go first. Yeah, well, um, roll me a constitution saving through the Dagar. Oh, um, how much do I, I have? Is this because he's drunk? This is because he's getting sober. <laughs> so you you want to fail this. <laughs> How much was, was it? Plus two? Uh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. And you fail. Perfect. <laughs> or, so you're, 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 still, you're still tipsy enough to, uh, yeah. to maintain that health bonus. Awesome. So... Yeah. I'm just gonna kind of motion that Day Guy should go to the front since he's a little bit more strong than I am. Okay then, so should I just move right along? Yep. Our speed is the amount we can move in an action, correct? Yeah. So for him it would be like one, two, three, four, and that's about 20 feet. Okay. So he charges up, what do you do? So I have five. For this is 25. This yeah, speed. yeah. So you have, so you can go one more speed if you want to. Or I could just go here and attack the one right in front of me. Exactly. Yeah, right in front of me. With go what weapon? That. I'm gonna hit him with my uh, my big sword. Cool. Let's see what happens. Oh, hey. Natural 20. Uh, roll one more uh, d6. D6. Yeah. No bonus. Um, nope, no bonus. Sweet! So, uh, you get a to do a total of 12, was that 14? Yeah, 14 damage 14. on on this guy here, uh, decapitating him instantly. Yeah! Uh, Rikul, uh, off to a great start with Dakar. Uh, one of your hands is being used to hold a lantern up, and the other is whatever you want. Yeah, um, am I able to hang the lantern on the cart? So um... carry it? Uh, it'll take an action. Okay, then I'll just hold on to it. Um, with my other hand... Uh, I'm gonna use one of my throwing daggers and cool. throw it at the archer. Cool. The uh, so that would just be a, a throwing attack. Be 1d20 plus, uh, plus 4. Oh, it slides right through his armor. Uh, give him some damage. Uh, damage should be 1d4 plus your plus 3. Nice. Seven damage. Nice. You, you see it just lodge right into his uh, right into his neck. He, he, st he starts squirming. Uh, this guy right here, you see him, uh, he starts to chant. And as he does, you see a small patch of, uh, of the stone right there. Start to turn um, slick and greasy. Take that chanting fucker out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that can't be a good thing. No. No, um, I like it when people are chanting. Uh, roll me a dexterity save and throw there, Digar. Whoa, what, why are we doing this? Uh, 1d20 plus your dexterity modifier. Um, yeah. Does it get a negative effect for being drunk? Um, no, because he's 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 not drunk. He's tipsy. tipsy. If he yeah, if he sorry. failed oh, the first go. time, yeah. you've gotten you got twelve. Uh, this guy's DC would be about eleven. So um so yeah um you 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 start sliding around, but you manage to balance yourself. That's right. Um yep. Yeah. But you but this is now rough terrain. Uh, the Cobalt Defender. Uh, this guy comes over here and he kind of gives you a, a stab. Whoa. I don't want that. You should stop that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh 13 is going to hit your... Ah, uh, yeah, he, he kind of tries to stab into you, but it just all goes into your leather armor and twists. Yeah. Uh, he kind of <laughs> looks up and, and gets scared as nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, don't try to hit me. It doesn't yeah. work, clearly. 
Uh, this guy is going to try to, uh, he's going to, oh, whoops. He's going to try to stab you with his spear. They're all trying to kill me now. I guess that makes sense. Oh! Uh, yeah, yeah, I see how, I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this guy does a, a serious stab to you as uh, as imagines to go through. Oh no, you you have a 15 AC and 23 health. Oof. So uh, so yeah, you just get stabbed in the chest and just you spit out some blood. This guy oh, re That's reaves into you. Uh, he then ends that by running away. Oof. Oof. <laughs> so he yeah, hits he me and scared. then runs away. Uh, like, this this guy moves into here, uh, and he throws a javelin at Cillian. Ha, not me this time. <laughs> Great. Does a 13 hit your AC? Yeah. It, does, it does not. Uh, after he misses, he backs off to... Uh, Cillian. Hmm. Well, I'm certainly not going to rush in there. <laughs> so I'll, uh... Do I have any? I'll uh, take out my rapier. Cool. Let's go. Uh, to stand over here by Rakul. Behind Rakul. <laughs> yeah. I am quite the meat shield. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, actually, <laughs> there's only one guy up here. Can I? Uh, I can make it up here. Right? Um, yeah, uh, it would be slippery right there, though. Uh, note that this is cart, it would, you have to climb over it to get through it. Alright. Um, I think I'll just hold you, up here. You, you started right here, though. You're on the cart, yeah. so. So where'd you want to go? I'll just, uh, I'll stand next to Rakul. Cool. And just, uh, just hold up for the time being. Awesome. Uh, the Cobalt Launcher. Uh, you see this guy take out a small jar of something something and throw it at Degar. What the uh, heck? You just throw um, it at me, right? Degar, give me another dexterity save. <sighs> Degar, Degar, he's not Four. Here. Um, this, this, this white goo just kind of covers you and then you just feel it start to harden. As you kind of start to try, try to rip it off, you notice it is incredibly sticky, like oh, glue. What, what is this stuff? Oh man, this is this can't be good. Uh, yeah, and then he kind of backs off. Uh, Calabar. These guys are cheeky as hell. Um, I'm gonna cast light on the cart so there's an extra light source for a cool and it can drop its top. Uh, on on the cart itself. Cool. Uh, certain parts of the cart begin to glow in a light. Um, loop. Yeah. So the uh, the, the cart itself is now giving you guys light. Should help out recover that light. Yes. You're now getting light from the cart. Uh, you want to move it all? <laughs> no. Degar. <laughs> uh, Degar, give me a uh, give me another dexterity saving throw. Sorry. Oh, Degar, uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. 14. You got 14? Yep. Nice. Uh, so you again, you, you, you're you basically doing a small dance while on top of this grease. <laughs> and your your hands are kind of stuck together oh, as you're trying cool. to move. Are they stuck to my weapon still? Yes, they are. Good. <laughs> That's all I need to hear. So what do you want to do? Um, I'm just going to... Go ahead and swing at the guy in front of me. Cool. Give me a roll. Ooh, a 13 unfortunately misses. He blocks it with his shield. What a, what a jerk. I know, right? <clears throat> why, why is he going and using his shield like that? <laughs> uh, say, Constellation, your, your attack was kind of high. Uh, it would have went over his head anyway. You think he blocked it with his shield as a courtesy. Oh. <laughs> Rick cool. Okay. Uh, you can, if you'd okay. like, you can set down your light. Yeah, I'm gonna set down the light that I've been carrying, and I'm gonna move up, um, I don't actually have control of my character, but I'm gonna move up this way. Cool. Oh, you don't have control of your character? Yeah. Oh, you should. Oh, wait, maybe I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm sorry. Move up this way, and as I'm coming up, I'm gonna reach into my 
bag that I have, and I'm going to pull out my zombified frog. Cool. I'm going to mumble some stuff under my breath and attempt to shoot a poison cloud in the guy in front of Degar's face. Cool. Uh, he is going to... You, 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 you shoot this crack cloud in his face, he begins to cough. Unfortunately, though, he, he manages to withstand the, uh, the uh, poison's oh. effects as he's coughing him out. <laughs> Alright. Okay, oh, oh yeah, this guy's this ability, sweet. Um, you see this guy begin to chant. And as he does... Uh, Is he getting bigger? Uh, no, that's just a mistake. Okay. Oh, uh, he's growing, that's what he's doing, he's <laughs> chanting and he's yeah. growing. <laughs> what is he casting? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> no. Uh, you see all these guys seem to, uh, seem to start doubling up. Oh, he really needs to die. <sighs> well, I'm kind of stuck right here missing, so you might need to take care of him. Oh. Apparently I can't. <laughs> uh, one more second here. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that happens there. Uh, so the Cobalt Defender. Uh, uh, you see these two both again. Uh, they're actually going to back off. Um, that's right. You better back off. Yeah, they go to here and to here. Uh, oh, these good sign. You see these uh, these four. They all take out javelins and begin throwing them at Dagar. <laughs> What's going on? I'm going to die here or something. You might. Maybe we should run from. We need to kill the guy chanting. I mean, if he's going to double up their forces. Don't you have like fire you can throw at them or something? Uh, you notice you notice quickly that several just go right through you, uh, while one sticks deep in. So they're illusions. Oh. Uh, you do take two points of damage though, from the one that sticks inside of you. Oh, okay. Guess that makes sense. Um, Cillian, you're up. All right. Um, ooh. Question real quick, do we have line of sight like through this? Or um, do you have line of sight? Uh, yeah. no. Um, unfortunately these guys are giving you, giving you the cover to behind okay. them. Got it. But, um, if he is what others are saying, you might be able to shoot right through him. Okay. Guess, uh, uh... I can so move through very cool, right? You can, yes. Alright, I guess I'll, uh, move up here. Cool. And can I, uh, throw one of my flask of oil on this group of people adjacent to me? Uh, you can throw it on one person, pretty much. Alright, uh, yeah. how about this guy standing right in front of, a uh, little chanting dude? That guy right there? Sure. So you want to yeah. throw it at his feet, or you want to throw it on him? Preferably on him. Cool, cool. Uh, so give me a dexterity, uh, dexterity attack. As you're kind of trying to, uh, it would be 1d20 plus, plus 4, because you're, uh, plus 3, because it's, uh, you're not proficient in this kind of weapon. Cool. Uh, you see it land kind of all over him, and then just go right through. Alright, so... As if, as if he wasn't even there. Okay, he's clearly not real. Got it. Okay, uh, these guys, uh, you see these two wind up arrows and launch into you, silly. Uh, 15, your AC? It is. 15. Okay, cool. Uh, it does one point of damage as these guys start to back off. Uh, Kelvar. This tactics go, this is really annoying. I'm going to move forward cautiously. Cool. Uh, you want to do an attack? Uh, I haven't really got anything ranged. Hmm. Dagger, then? Uh, you want to give me a dexterity saving throw? 
Cool. Uh, you fall flat on your back, fondly succumbing to the, the greasy floor. <laughs> uh, you, you feel you kind of try to get yourself up, but then you kind of feel the glue uh, making you stick to the ground. Um, this could be a problem. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to try and stand back up. Cool. Uh, okay, give me a strength saving throw. Ooh, you easily managed to do it. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you managed to uh, stand yourself back up. Um, okay. Still covered in the gulo. That's not good. So, am I done? I suppose. Uh, Rickle. I suppose that would take a lot of work. <laughs> I'm gonna shove my gross petrified or zombified frog back in my bag and pull out my fairy jar. Cool. And I'm going to cast a witch's bolt on the guy that's chanting. Awesome. Uh, so give me an attack. Alright. Be 1d20 plus 3 plus yeah. 1. Yeah. Oh, plus 16. One on yeah, plus 1 top of that. So 17 total? Yeah, it hits. Um, so so he, uh, Rakul starts shaking this fairy in a jar. And you see this uh, lightning bolt stream out and attack this guy. Um, so give roll me one d twelve. Five. So uh, five damage, and the lightning bolt does not stop. It continues um, until next turn. Uh, Cobalt. Uh, he is going to going to back off. Um, I guess he can't really back off anymore, can he? I think he's just going to. Yeah, he's going, to, he's going to try to back off to here. Um, Cobalt Defender. He is going to... Yeah, they're going to stay backed off to him. Uh, the drones are going to see Cillian... Uh, they're going to see Rickle doing the attack, and they're going to throw at you. Uh, one of them... 17 hits, 10 does not. One of them manages to dig in and take three points of damage as you are stabbed by this the spear. Uh, Cillian, you're up. I will... <sighs> well, this guy right to the left of me, he's a illusion, right? I'm aware of that now? Um, you're aware of whatever you're aware of. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll, uh... I'll just take a charge at this archer and, uh... Cool. Try to stabby-stab. Nice. Give me a roll. That's a uh, dexterity for me? Yes. This reference is good. That's up there with... That would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> cool. Uh, you take a swing and he kind of ducks and it just goes right right over his head. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you, but they, t they draw back the bow and they fire into your chest. Uh, 13, but yeah, it goes right over your head. So you duck. Uh, Kelbar. Right. Okay, fair enough. He's gonna get attacked with a warhammer. Uh, which one? There's two. Directly ahead. Directly ahead? Cool. Give me a roll. 18, beautiful. Okay, give us some damage. Uh, damage for the warhammer. 1d8 plus 3 it should be. Yeah, or, it uh, depends on what your, um, not sure what your strength is. I'm say it's Warhammer, isn't it? 2d4. Oh, is it Warhammer? Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it'd be 2d4 plus... Not a lot. <laughs> oh, 2. Cool. <laughs> yeah, plus 2. Yep. 6 points of damage, nice. Uh, so you, you just bonk him right on the head. Oof. You see, you see, some his neck is is seriously damaged by that attack, as well as his skull is probably fractured. Uh, Degar, uh, you're still covered in that goo. Um, and of course, uh, give me a deck save and throw. Did not trip again. Uh, you trip again. <laughs> can, I, can I try to crawl forward out of the the stuff on the floor? While covered in glue, well, absolutely, absolutely not. That would be so. Uh, give, give me a, give me a strength saving throw. 
It would require a very high. <laughs> I can't like, do anything. It's gonna be such a high attack. Yeah, that's that's these guys' strategy. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, you just you start you, these everyone around you, like Rickle, starts looking at you, trying to worm your way around, but you're just <laughs> making no progress. Like, just shooting out of my other hand. <laughs> um, Rickle, we do. I'm, um, I'm gonna shake my little fairies even harder and keep maintain my uh. Cool. Uh, give me another 1d12 damage. Uh, yeah, you see this guy's just completely fried as he just gets launched backwards. Yes! Um, <laughs> and that's it for my turn. Actually, can I move forward one square after I attack? Absolutely, you can, yes. Alright, I'll get there. Cool. Um... help me up. Um... <laughs> get yourself yeah. covered with blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't wanna be glued yep. to you, dead guy. Uh, you, you see this guy, this guy yells out a command, and they all start, he starts running away. Yeah... He runs off in the darkness, the drones are gonna do the same. Uh, Calabar, if you want, you can t attack up to me on this guy. Oh, I'm gonna spang him one, yes. Give me, yeah, give me an attack. Twenty twenty plus three. Oh. Yeah. Two D four plus two. Uh, yeah, I was wrong about that. It's D eight. Yeah, I I, I I figured it was uh it was D eight. <laughs> I was like, but if you if you're using a two hand club, feel free. Uh, shit, give me one D eight plus two. Six damage. Yeah, you you just want you just uh. Lion's head up with the wall, and it just creates raspberry jam. Uh, the other one runs off in the distance. Uh, Cillian. Uh, is this the only uh, bugger left here? Yep. Nail him. Stab his eyes out. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna charge him and attack. Cool. Uh, Unfortunately, the attack is just too high, and he uh, he ducks under and tries to get away. Uh, he uh, he also runs away. Uh, if you want, you take attack opportunity though against him. Do it. Do it. Do it. Who was that? Uh, Cillian. Uh, he he's basically just turning around, and running away. If you want, you can try to stab his back. Okay, no, yeah. Step on his tail, stab him. <laughs> exactly. Even worse. You you try to step on his tail. It's just too dark. You step <laughs> on the ground. You start stabbing forward wildly as he runs away. Uh, and you just you just hear them in the distance. They're the little clip clop. They're running. I'm gonna walk over to Dagar now and try and help him up. Coach, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th thanks. He's kind of been stuck on the ground here for a Actually, while. Actually, I don't touch him. I'm gonna pull out my uh, my feather and I'm gonna cast a magical or mage hand and have that try and help him up. Cool. Um, <laughs> you, you, you st Dagar starts using this tiny little force, the little force hand to try to leverage himself <laughs> up. Um, you after can only lift like ten pounds or something, yeah. right? <laughs> after about uh, five minutes, the stuff dries and and you're able to just crack it off real quickly. Eventually, okay, you're uh, you're back to your normal self. Um, although you are guys are quite wounded now. I'm gonna give Dagar a pat on the back and say, "Good job, buddy." <laughs> hey, remember I did like completely decapitate that one. You like, did. You did make the initial. I, splat. I did. I did head. <laughs> I like how I just charge at him. I did don't think we're abusing you. You took up. You took it on the head for us, though. Yeah. yeah. Run at him, take a head off, and I'm just kind of stuck. On the yeah, well, yeah, but you stopped him <laughs> from ambushing us, and that's the best thing. Now that yeah. you're all okay, you should probably get back to pulling that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to cut this little short, guys, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, in, the, in the meantime, I'll throw a pure light in his direction. Um, if, if you guys, if you're willing to wait like an hour just resting and healing up your wounds, uh, you can just gain 1d10 back anyway. Or he can. Yeah, anyway. I was gonna ask if we have to rest or if we have like, uh, yeah. surges or Um, if somebody's willing to pull the cart uh, while Dagar is kind of sitting on it, um, you guys won't even lose time. 
Looking uh, at yeah, you, which, gnome. I think I get the feeling people are looking at me. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you are. Uh, you are I'm a also dwarf. a little bit injured, so I mean, I could use a rest too. Oh, really? <laughs> Just for a little while. I mean, <laughs> okay. if you're hungry, well, I think I cooked that guy long enough you could eat him. <laughs> I will do the following things. I will first of all bandage these silly sods and make sure uh -huh. that. Bones are here, uh, sealed up and, and oh, stitched. What, what a nice guy. Sounds good. Uh, anyone who wants to can heal um, their hit dice in health. Uh, that'll be 1d12 for Dagger, 1d, I think, 8 for Rickle. Yeah. Uh, Cillian, I don't think, took a, took a damage that game. 12. There we go. Six. Perfect. So you're back to full health on Dagger. 10. And this is the second thing I'm going to do is going to have uh, these things that had a go at us. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Cool. Um, Follow Kelbar while yeah. he investigates them. Give me an investigation check based on intelligence. Intelligent? Oh, you know I'm not intelligence. I know, but you always <laughs> want to do search checks. You're the smartest little dwarf I know, Kelbar. <laughs> Believe in yourself. The little dwarf that could. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you said. <laughs> Maybe I'll. Um, Kelopar gets the, the weird idea that these guys probably hid something up their bum. And he's... <laughs> he's, 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 he's something. He stirred something? Yeah, you... Oh, if, okay. if, if, yeah, I, I don't know if you want to check, but um, that's... That sounds like a job for the mage yeah. hand. Well, so okay, far, that's, that's all you they think. They tend to swallow their treasures, so it is worth eviscerating them just to check. I mean, if that's what you're gonna do. Um... <laughs> Well, if we have to, if you actually want to like look in their butt, I guess I can use a mage hand or dagger or something um, and just cut them in half. Rick, I'm uh, not Rick. Uh, whoever else wants to do a search check, feel free. I'll, I'll search uh, one. What is that? Is a uh, one twenty plus intelligence. Intelligence. Nineteen. Ooh. Yeah, Rick is it's, it's just rifling through their pockets in typical gypsy yeah. fashion. Um, just one yeah, yeah, and uh, just look at this here. Where are you? There you are. Cool. Um, uh, okay, cool. Uh, you start feeling them up, and you actually notice they have some jewels on them. Um, start taking them. Nice. Uh, you, they're about 65 silver worth of uh, small gemstones. Uh, sapphires. Okay, uh, I'm assuming that I can share these with everyone? Um, if you wish, but um, you can also just put them into the sacks uh, filled yeah, with treasure. Yeah, into the cases of gems. Yeah, although these, these, are, these are far less uh, quality gems. Um, oh, put them yeah. in the salt. Good call. Yeah, because uh, each one of those gems is worth about 250 silver. These ones are, like, if you if you collect them all together, they're worth about 65. 65 silver yeah. and crummy gems. Yeah, uh, so Calabar, do you, do you want to try checking up, up the place? I'm not going to go completely personal, but the guy that was casting spells, I do want to have a look at him. Cool, I want to cool. watch Calabar as he does um, whatever he does to this person. <laughs> Uh, that, that's actually where they found the jewels, was on this guy here. Um, they, they padded down the rest, they couldn't, besides like the small spears they were holding, he couldn't find anything. But um, yeah, this guy appears to have a couple fetish objects, and uh, and a small staff. And, yeah, uh, and of course they have a bunch of tech magic so he can keep his magic items. Cool, cool. <laughs> I'd, I could use magic items there, uh, Kelbar, what types of fetishes does he have? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't appear to be anything you can use. Recall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna are, go hang out, there, guy. Are those weapons still usable? Uh, the spears and javelins, they sure are, but they're they're small and they're they're inferior quality. Go get a toothpick, Digger. Can we can we throw them on the cart anyways? And bring them back to the uh, <laughs> yeah. Little gnome? Tell them we got them from mental duress. Um, they would they would generally prefer non-stick uh, uh spears. Got like stone uh, tips really on. Could be that kind of party, the kind that even takes their armor and their underwear to sell as rags. They can keep the underwear. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want to see those under there. Don't want to see that. Terrifying. Okay, uh, so you guys continue traveling then? 
Uh, after you yeah, guys kind of wake up and... Yeah, the day guy's all uh, healed up. It looks like you can pull the cart. Yeah. Uh, you guys you guys finish your sleep and you guys begin... You all jump back on the cart. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not pulling you guys. You guys I'll, are going to have to I'll go up out. front with uh, day guy if you guys want. I mean, oh, Kelbar did oh. heal me up, so I feel very uh, reinvigorated. How about this for suggestion? Me and Dega can take a sprung each, and you can, you two can just sit on the back and keep an eye out. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Dega, uh, are you thirsty? <laughs> Finish off that, uh, that wine. Oh, cool. Wow, you've got through a gallon of wine. <laughs> roll me another d. Roll me another d20. At what point does Tipsy become like full on inebriated? Uh, he'd have to drink a lot. Um, okay. and that's plus two, dwarf. so that's ten. Uh, so yeah, you're you're fine. You gain uh, another. Uh, unfortunately, you you yeah you 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 slept off most of it, and the adrenaline uh, in the fight would have got you right out of it. Um, but you would have four extra HP now. I'm gonna also make a note to tell Calibar I'm glad he came with us. Without him, I'd be uh, pretty damaged right now. It's a good thing we met him. Yeah, I think he helped us quite a bit in that little encounter there. Yeah, the way the guy's head is still kind of stuck to the wall over there. Uh, just as you say that, you see you see the part of the head just kind of splat down on the ground. Finally, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was just, it was stuck there for hours. Nice. Okay, so you guys continue on. Okay. Uh, so several hours later, you eventually you start reaching a, a large door. You, as you approach, you see two what appear to be uh, hobgoblins. Where is this? Uh, it is where I will reveal to you in one moment. Oh, okay. I was going to say, well, I'm missing it again. <laughs> I have a little bit. doing alright so far. Oh, yeah. Uh, the path continues on that way, but you're going this way. Uh, you see a large gate before you. Um, is this the city we were going to? Uh, th uh, this The map directs you that this is where you were going. This is Mental Duress. I'll just mount our uh, yeah. cart and approach I'll hop off the... And, uh, and... Guys, big hobgoblins. I'll up. join. Cool. I'll join. Oi, cool. oi, ugly! Is this the trick, boss? <laughs> uh, this, this, you see this guy. He doesn't say a word. He just turns to you and just gives you a slow nod. Good, good. Again, I'm gonna say uh, Malastros. Uh, they, uh, they, they kind of, they nod. He nods again, and he goes back to here, and uh, he taps, he taps a few times on the this door, until eventually it begins to open up. I'm gonna hop back in the cart. <laughs> well remembered. Uh, the door begins to open up. And uh, as it does, uh, you can hear the sounds of trade, bickering and bartering as you begin to wheel your small uh, your, your thing through. We should get this cart painted up. Yeah, and blood of uh, hob <laughs> not hobgoblins, whatever we just killed. <laughs> Find somewhere to get rid of all this salt. Yeah. Go ahead and move your guys. Oh. Are you moving in? So this is open now. The door is now open. Uh, there. Okay. Okay, you lead with the cart. I'll follow. You see people bartering and, and speaking. Uh, you could see uh, a couple of, of deep uh, deep dwarves, uh, some a human woman, uh, another uh, another human woman, uh, deep uh, deep uh, a deep dwarf, uh, what appears to be a drow woman, uh, a, a gnome from from the surface world, and as well as uh, appears not no. And it kind of, as it opens up, you actually get, you see it's even wider. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, there's uh, some pretty gnarly stuff in here. Uh, as the the noise that you're hearing is emanating from these three, uh, these four women. 
as they appear to be chanting in the center. Uh, which four? I'm sorry. Hmm? Which four are chanting? Uh, these four. Oh, okay. Oh. I see that. Makes sense. Is that a beholder? It does appear... You do see a beholder. Uh, you seem to be, appear to be chatting up one of these, uh... One of these here guys. Uh, you guess, the older talking? Indeed. Right? He's speaking to them. That's weird. Um, so, just to clarify, I'm a th roughly third level character, and I'm on the fridge of the Underdark. You're a really nasty ref, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you want to do? I'd like to get some more throwing daggers so I don't have to get as close next time we get in combat. Oh, but you you have four throwing daggers on you. Yeah, I've got three more still, but... No, you, you have four. You you would pick your daggers up, obviously. Oh, I pick it up? Okay. Yeah. A any any item, any item that you throw and that you, you win the battle, you get to go get your stuff back. Excellent. If you have to run away, then no. You lose every item you th you've thrown. That makes sense. She's the kind of dagger thrower that once he's thrown it, can't be asked to clean it and just leaves it in the car. <laughs> I'm too bad. Only the cleanest yeah. daggers in my bag. Um, so as you look around, you see people like people be selling magical items, uh, weapons. <laughs> you see they're selling um, uh, they appear to be clothing and dresses and and books Ooh, and, and armors, rally, right? instruments and and hey. meats even. <laughs> And uh, a leather worker s selling backpacks and things of that nature. And uh, as you look forward, you can see uh, a, a, a beholder just looking onto a uh, a thing of his own slaves. As well as uh, as well as when you look out to here, you see these massive columns uh, just leading into the roof, hundreds of feet high. Um, and all these uh, people, all these large trading guilds uh, surrounding them. Well, let's find a place to unload some of this gear, or some of this salt. Looks we like, never, uh... You can say we never decided whether we wanted to get a weapon or a slave. Again, not to be the voice of reason or anything, but... <laughs> when we're trading, <clears> when <throat> we all, you know, sort of dive in, it makes us look a bit crap. So I suggest... <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, Rickle... You do the actual bargaining and trading. Oh. Me, and, me and Degar will act like your bodyguards. Because you are. Sit. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll just stand up. We'll stand on either side of you and look really hard because we are. Uh, Cillian, you can be like his accompaniment and money man. You can whisper to each other about shit. But on <laughs> the end, when we actually do the trading. But then, if we've got, if we look like we're a professional organization, we won't get scammed quite as much. As well, sounds to like a good plan to me. <laughs> scruffy sods with a cat. Instead of just bum rushing them and throwing salt at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay. Okay. Maybe, clearly, you're better at this planning thing than I am, because that's about what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> take my salt. I was just debating. <laughs> they don't take kindly to thievery around here, do they? Depends would, how good are you at stealing. <laughs> I, I bet I can steal something. Just, just wait. Okay, well, I like just Caleb as a uh, plan. Try and look professional. Um, I was gonna say that this uh, vendor over here looks like he sells food, so he'll probably like salt a lot. This is true. Why don't we go ahead and. But head you guys were saying that salt is just generally currency almost. <laughs> well, maybe we can talk to him, get an idea of what it's worth. Alright, well, I say we move up to where uh, that vendor is with all that food. I am kind of hungry. Oh, yeah. Cool. Do uh, you guys want to bring a cart with you? I suppose yes. that would help, yes. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. Cool. Uh, you approach this man. He appears to be... It appears to be a woman, actually. Uh -huh. uh, you, see, no, you, you see her using this large uh, mace to tenderize meats and just punch... Uh, punch uh, some uh, some mint right in there. Uh, she turns to you and as you approach she hands each of you a small shish kebab. I'm gonna pass oh. that back to Dagar. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Let me know how that is. It was pretty good. 
Yeah, he, cons he consumes he it. Okay? It's, it's very tasty. Okay. Oh yes, I want some more. Oh, you gave a kebab to the drunk. We're not conforming to stereotypes or anything, are we? <laughs> Cool. Um, I'm gonna ask the vendor lady if she has any interest in buying salt, the finest salt she's gonna come across. She kind of twists her neck and says, uh, sure, what kind of, uh, what are you looking for in payment-wise? Well, mostly we're interested in money, because money is king, but we do need to get some food, because, uh, Dagar here seems to fancy your kebabs. Uh, she kind of, uh, she kind of twists her neck a little bit, and she, uh, she says, well, I can, I can trade you some of this, uh, some of this boar for, for a bag of it. Some of this boar for a bag of salt. Yeah. She, 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 she uh, if, if you, uh, fine, you, you twist my arm, I'll, I'll give you the whole boar. 50 salt. I'm gonna turn to Cillian, whisper some, uh, secret tradey stuff that she can't hear, <laughs> and, uh, see what, see what Cillian thinks about the trade, if he thinks it's a sure. good deal. While they're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, she fail. And she fails food. her perception check. Good. Cool. Um. Yeah, cool. I'll food back here while <laughs> everyone's not paying attention. Um. Cool. Give me a stealth check there. Oh man, right. Or right. or a sleight of hand check. <laughs> I'm guessing I have no modifier on that. Not much. Oh, that's a shame. Try to cough heavily as he starts. Um. <laughs> Degar takes up a piece of meat, and uh, as he does, you see this guy from behind him uh, grab him by the shoulder. Uh, within with, How's it going? within moments, he's swarmed by uh, by these <laughs> by these guys. Hey guys, what's what's going on? Uh, um, one kind of gra one kind of holds him, uh, kind of grabs his shoulders from the front, just kind of like he's steadying him, and then hey. the one from behind just gives him a thwack to the head. Whoa. I'm gonna talk to the vendor lady and say I don't think we need the boar anymore. Yeah. Um, as as Digger kind of falls to the ground, as uh, as more of these guys actually even come out, um, you 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 see them uh, you see them actually start tying Digger up, and they uh, they start taking him. They keep they bound his legs and his hands, and they start dragging him uh, out, outward. Classic Digger, always getting tied up when he's drunk. Well, hey, hey guys, um, you wanna maybe uh, help help? Do we know him? Do we know him, that guy? <laughs> What's going on here? So, Have you guys seen that guy before? I I don't think we knew him. Maybe I'll uh, go up to this there, guy there and three ask him where they're uh, taking You him. two and a dwarf, that was it. I'm... Yeah, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to try and we're going to pull our cart a little bit closer. Cool. <laughs> uh, you guys hear a loud splash in the distance. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Did he just get thrown into that river you were talking about before? <laughs> uh, you see three of them return. Oh, man. Okay, well, we should, uh... Oh, what was it? probably go help him out. I was gonna say we should try and get some of that money, or some money, really fast, and then go help him. <laughs> yeah, I'm apparently in the river now. I just, I wanted some meat. You guys could have been a little. I was louder. buying you. Oh, uh, M Matt, Matt, you're dead. You can't, you can't talk now. You're dead. You're in, you're in the river. You can't talk. Oh, oh man. Oh. Well, uh, yeah. We should. Uh, I think that we should try and sell off some of our stuff really quickly, and then go investigate where what so, they did with our friend. So I'm gone. Oh. Or do you, we know that they killed him? We uh, to find out you can assume that. your friend is drowning in the lake. <laughs> Drowning? You're like, am I just like completely gone now? Um. Well, in three minutes, you'll be completely dead. All right. We should go help that uh, poor fool who they just drug off, even though we don't know him. Cool. Um. As you go to leave, this guy kind of notices, and he says, "I, I wouldn't suggest that." He kind of, he kind of points <laughs> up into the sky. Um. As you look, you can see uh these these girls here seem these girls are uh, right here seem to be forming some sort of bubble. Uh, beyond said bubble, you see these two massive red eyes, as if they're looking into the, uh, the area. Okay. Um, <laughs> can I, uh, ask one of, either that guy or one of these guards over here, um, what they did with our friend? Or what they did with that guy, we don't know? Uh, I said, well, <laughs> well, he stole, so he got thrown in the Black River. Okay, I'm gonna consult with my, uh, party members then and see what they think we should do about that um, and not in earshot of the guard <laughs> sure that that's that's cool I'll say it again and being thrown in the black river and that's that's 
very colourful. But what does that actually mean? <laughs> he's he's going to drown. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, grease one of these guards' palms and see if we can't get him a little help. Salt's not very greasy. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, we should. Oh, uh, I hate, I really hate doing this. Can, wait, can we go? Uh, hi, I'll just tap him on the shoulder again. Yeah. Hi, yeah, excuse me? Yeah, he says, yeah, uh, would you, would you like some leather? Yeah, uh, who's in charge? Uh, of what? Everything. I <laughs> uh, he says, well, the, uh, you, you mean, you mean these guards in particular? Well, yeah. I uh, says, uh, they're, they're, uh, what's it called, they're mercenaries who work for, in addition to her, him, and uh, and that guy over there, as well as this girl. Ah, that looks very uh, like mind flare. I... He appears that that this one, this guy over here, um, appears to be holding on, riding some sort of giant slug <laughs> or a snail. Yeah. So he's that not definitely, quick. Definitely looks like a mind flare. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's been about two minutes at this point. Alright. Um, <laughs> someone should. Uh, well, uh, you said that he looked up and we like met and mentioned the lake, and he looked up at red eyes. Uh, you guys look up and you can see these gigantic red, red eyes. eyes. Okay, I don't care. I say that we go after the our friend. I, I want to go and find the lake. I want to go towards where hmm. they took him. Uh, as as you start to approach, you can notice how it it turns incredibly dark as you reach. Uh, the outer edge of the protective circle that the women are creating. Well, he's gonna die in like a minute, so... What do you guys think? Do we go after him, or just let him die? <laughs> uh, do you guys have another plan? Is that the, the drow chick here, yeah? I'm not uh, gonna... yeah, that, that appears to be a drow one. For the record, I'm Said not leaving she... behind our cart. Has... Power? Um, she appears to be a leader of this here cartel. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to grab you, Kelly. Oh, that's alright. Myself. <laughs> okay, well, I'll bow. Cool. So, excuse me for being brief, but my friend's about to die. Can I have him back, please? <laughs> uh, she's, 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 she says, well, uh, she says, sure, just, just give me a, give me a couple of minutes. I just need to, uh, get all the, uh, all the leaders together, and then we, we can discuss it. a couple minutes, minutes though. Ah, uh, she says, "Oh, that's a shame. Maybe, sh maybe he shouldn't have stole something." He what didn't technically steal it. In the time that we have to convince you that this doesn't have to happen, how about some of our salt, or or maybe uh maybe a few few gems, maybe? She she kind of uh she kind of gives a smile and says, "Uh, gems? How many gems?" Offer her the shitty one. <laughs> the crummy gems. How many were there? 65 silver worth. How about these lovely gems? Um, ones. You, you, you kind of pour it into her hand and she starts kind of feeling it up and she kind of just looks at you like kind of angrily and she just kind of turns her hand and they fall into the ground. All right, she, all right. she, turned, she turns away and she, she walks back to her caravan. They just insult her. <laughs> it would appear as such. Okay, let's go to the next one. <laughs> or we could just dump the chest on the floor there. Yeah. No. That okay. was that was another minute. Oh, uh, so he's dead. Well, it's three minutes now. Okay. He would he might start taking uh, saves. He might be okay. He might be dead. I don't know. Throw her a case then, I guess, if you think we can still convince her. One of the cases of the nice gems. Oh, uh, that's just attitude. Drow do that. What was it? Drow. They do attitude yeah. and flamboyance and posing and looking cool. Uh, okay, so this is partially an act, but she still probably wants more money. Oh, yeah, yeah, she wants more money. <laughs> Alright, if you guys are okay with it, I think we should trade one of our cases of <laughs> the nice gems for our friend's life. Yeah, go for it. Take it All off right. the cart and slam it, slam it down yeah. in front of her. Make it look good. Cool. Um, she kind of, she kind of raises an eyebrow, she kind of opens up the this tiny chest and looks at the gems. Uh, she closes it, snaps the little lock, picks it up, 
and uh, you see one of she kind of gives a nod as she returns to here. Uh, she gives a nod to this guy who throws you a uh, what's the word? A grappling hook attached to some rope. <laughs> So we still have to go up against whatever has bright red eyes, and that's all we get is a rope. Okay, well I'm gonna scoop up those uh, sh crummy gems off the ground. Cool. <laughs> uh, that'll probably take you a little bit, like 30 seconds. I uh, I'll- never mind, I won't even do it. I'm gonna say that we should move back and try and start throwing a grappling hook at our friend. <laughs> probably a idea. Let's go fishing for dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you said that they took him back this way? Um, that way. Alright, I'm gonna bring the cart with me. <laughs> cool. Check I'll it. help you out with the cart there. There we go. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, this guard kind of looks at you funny as you go on, and he kind of backs off. Thanks for that guard. No. Uh, can you two give me strength checks? Excuse us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, I... oh, I botched it. Yep. So, you guys are moving really, 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 really slowly. Hey, hey. hey but Killian there. <laughs> so, you... So, yeah, so while one wheel is going fast, the other is going quite slow. So you guys actually... I just my grip and, like, get run over on my foot or something. No, you guys you guys end up about here. <laughs> Face in the wrong direction. Essentially. <laughs> hey, uh... Kelvar, you wanna come out here and uh, yeah, lend us a hand with this Kelvar card? The option to pull, since he's probably stronger than I am. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, that was about another 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna start, like, running this way with the hook. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, you run run into the darkness, um... Uh, give me a perception check. Yeah. Uh, is that plus dex or anything? Um, yes. No, plus wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. No, I'm tired. Eleven. Eleven. Um, so you do not even notice when you, uh, when you fall. Fuck. Foot first into the uh, into the water. Splash. Yeah. Is it right here where I'm at? Uh no no it's 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 very far away. You guys will be over here. Okay. Yeah. Oh that was big quick and that's big quick. Uh so you fall you fall into the water. You begin you having you swim. Uh it's it's deeper than you are tall. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of tread water I guess and start yelling for uh, Degar. Cool. <laughs> Uh, so you just start yelling Degar while, while swimming in the water. <laughs> Anyone uh, have anything special that will help us see him under the water somewhere? Cast light. Cool. Uh, you cast light, and uh, you kind of you cast it above the water. And you just see the water's pitch black. Lovely. Um. Can I uh, cast my mage hand and start feeling around all under the water? Uh, you wouldn't be able to I feel. To oh yeah, true. Yes. <laughs> Before you start swimming properly, throw us the damn other end of the rope. You've got the hook. <laughs> I'm, okay, yeah, if I have the hook, I'm going to toss it back to Kalabar, since he's going to be the strongest one. He's probably going to pull us cool. out. Been, another, been about another 30 seconds by this point. I'm about to oh. do something that we might actually regret. I'll grab the rope and I'll anchor it to the cart. <laughs> okay. Cool. And now we're just swimming around looking for him in the water. Oh, cool. I um, so you're you're like diving uh -huh. under trying to find him. Yeah, I'm frantically searching for him. Cool. Uh, every time you dive under, it is blacker than black. It's oh. darker than black. You can't. You can't see a thing. Do I know he's here? Like, am I? I not have to have sight to cast command. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Tell him to breathe out so that bubbles come up or something. <laughs> Just exhale. Assume he's still alive. Anymore. Yeah, if he has anything left in him. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you definitely need to see him. 
don't think you can do command word appear. Appear? Um, no. If, if he had, like, the ability of light or something, uh, then it would be like, cast light, and it would be like, oh, and be like, there he is. <laughs> yeah, cast light on him so he just starts glowing. So what's making this, uh, water so dark? Is it just lack of light? Um, it, it is most likely some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of mineral inside it. Like, it's just rich with minerals and, and what's the, um, and sewage and things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna crawl out of the sewage water and start, like, casting out the, uh, now, grappling see, hook into the water. I was thinking looking really pretty until you said that. <laughs> right, a whole bunch of minerals. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna start casting. I'm gonna go back to the shoreline or whatever it is and start casting the rope out in, cool. into the water and try and find him, hook him. Okay, um, uh, okay, give me a 1d20. Or do you want me to roll a 1d20 to see? Uh, okay, sure. I did it, 10. Cool. <laughs> um, you start throwing it and eventually you, you hook onto something. I'm gonna have Calabar and Killian ask them to help me pull whatever it is up out of it, and hopefully yeah. it's not a dead body of Degar. You you start pulling. Uh, give me uh, you, uh with all three of you it would take up. We only take up about a moment or two. Uh, you start pulling heavily, and eventually the uh, uh on Calabar's light, um, you start to see the glimmer of, of wet armor as you pull out a a body out of the <laughs> out of the lake. A body. <laughs> Yeah, it's but it's not. Dead. It's it's covered with seaweed. You can't see who it is. It's a it is a short fat thing though. <laughs> use a, I use the the water and the water skin to maybe wash them off real quick. Um, cool. Uh, you start washing it off. You cast, you, you spread the uh, the seaweed covering his face, and you clearly see that this is just a a deceased a deceased I, uh, I human. Cast out the line again. There's probably a bunch of dead people in this for all the people that steal and they throw them in here. So we're just gonna keep pulling up dead bodies. <laughs> it's a dead dwarf though, yeah? Hmm? It's a dead dwarf. Uh it's a dead human, like a fat dead human. Oh, like a short short fat, dead short fat dead human, yeah. Oh screw him then, I was gonna get him yeah. dead or kinda kick him back into the water and then throw oh, out the Oh no, we'll just end up pulling the same <laughs> get out twice. <laughs> okay, I don't kick him back in. Cool. But it would, it would be that. too heavy for you to kick back in anyway. It would need a lot of. It would need your whole body. Uh, that that took about a minute to do. It's been about. Yeah, it's he's been he's been submerged for about probably about five minutes now. He's just dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, while he's casting out, can I go diving in there, try to search for him? Uh you can. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a strength. Uh, athletics check for swimming around in the water with your armor on. While he's doing that, can I go over here and talk to this uh, hobgoblin guard? <laughs> you sure can. Great. Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, the the weight of your armor is is more than you anticipated, and you find yourself uh, at the bottom of the lake. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's basically just standing around, um, on top of a a some something quite soft. Can I? Ask uh, the the sea the seaweed is very long. You can feel these long, uh, tendril like um, uh, plants kind of just waving over you. Uh, what do you want? What do you want to ask the guard, Rickle? I was gonna ask him if he lost something. If he dropped something in the lake, how would he find it? Nah, uh, he just turns to you and nods. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Did you said there's something soft underneath my feet? Yeah, it feel it feels soft. I'm gonna come back over to the group. Alright, what if I uh what if I ditch my armor? Will I be able to surface? Uh it would be easier to surface. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Cool. Uh you ditch your armor. Uh, you're, you basically just rip it off and give me a dexterity save and throw it out. Take it off quickly. And by this time, I've come to terms with the fact that Degar is dead. I accept that he is dead and I no longer <laughs> want to try and recover him. 
16, yeah. So you 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 basically um you take a few you take your knife and you just kind of slit your your armor in half and you float up to the surface based on your own buoyancy. And eventually, you just all proch, and uh, you swim to the surface and you get to your team. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to the group and say that I think that Daegar is completely dead and gone, and we should give up well, I was, on him. I was standing on something. And I think it could have been a a body, a yeah. fresh body. Yeah, but he said he had like three minutes, and it's been well past that now. It's like seven minutes at this point. <laughs> Even with his dwarven constitution, it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he's done. It's toast. There lies Dagar the drunk. <laughs> Alright, sorry Dagar. Okay. Um do we continue trying to peddle our wares for some money? If if you okay, feel we're... like that's thing I mean Dagar finally got his wish. <laughs> True. <laughs> he finally did get his wish, that battle crazed. <laughs> I mean, don't want him to die in vain, so we might as well try to get something out of there. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's turn our card around. Sweet. We should uh detach that uh grappling hook. We should keep it, but unanchor it from the cart. Well, yeah, it cost us enough. Sorry, you enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna say we should go give it back to the lady and say it was worth this. Cool. So you guys right. return? I, I think we'd yeah. better be fucking polite about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just because she's friends with a uh, mind flayer doesn't mean we have to be nice to her. <laughs> or does oh, it? <laughs> but the fact that she's in charge of the guys that throw us into lakes and she just threw the hardest oh, she, person. She's, she's one of the people who, who does pe throw pe throws people in the lakes. Okay, um, who do you think we can... Or should, do you want to just try and trade the uh, salt no. straight for weapons? Uh, as you guys look around, you can see, yeah, once right up here, just so many weapons coming from these guys. There They're just hopped up to the gills. Um, you can see a, a smaller weapons trader right here. Um, he has not nearly the amount of weapons they have. But uh, he, he does appear to have more of varying quality. Uh, well, varying this guy was supposed items. to be a, uh, like a leader kind of guy? Yeah, this guy is definitely a leader. Okay. I say we go talk to him. Yeah, what do you okay. guys think? Alright, let's do it. With the U-turn. Please uh, turn that around, Kelabar. So generous of you to pull the cart. <laughs> cool. Uh, you approach this, this, uh, this stern-looking dwar uh, dwarf. Uh, he appears to be a deep dwarf, um, so he's, he's, his, his body's all gray. Um, yeah, it's, he, he appears to have this kind of his, his hair looks like looks more like nails or spikes. Uh, it's it's the look that's in in the in the underdog. <laughs> he listens to a lot of dwarven industrial music. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm gonna ask him or introduce myself and tell him that I'm looking to buy some weapons. Yeah, he says greetings. I'm Grimdar Shorts. Uh, you're looking to buy weapons? Well I have weapons to buy I have weapons I could I could buy. So yeah. Uh, okay. Well the thing here Grimdar is that we don't have any cash on us, but what we do have is some high quality salt. Hmm. He you seem kinda of shrug. And we'd like to trade it for your weapons. Again, he shrugs. How do you feel about ale? Uh, you see, um, you see, you see, one of his eyebrows kind of raises up. <laughs> and what about uh, gems? Um, you see his eyebrow go back down to where it was. Okay. <laughs> well. I'm gonna tell him that we have a keg of ale that we're willing to trade for some weapons. Yeah, he um, he, he says, well, we don't really, we don't really need ale with dwarves, but um, we could, he could, we could probably do something. 
Okay, if he doesn't need ale, what does he think he needs? Um, he, he, he says, how many, how many, how many weapons do you want for your keg? Hmm. I'm what, what, what kind are you looking for? I was gonna say, I'm gonna talk to Killian and Kailbar and ask them if they remember what kind of weapons Sure. Uh, they this, wanted this, and this guy goes back and you see these two start talking Stone. to him too. Yeah, I don't remember, did they ever tell us in Blingdon Stone what type of weapons they wanted, or did they just say weapons? They did, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh -huh. they just said weapons. Um, just mention Blingdon Stone, we'll give this guy a quick perception check. Also, I'm also pretty sure they can have all Good. Oh, no. This This guy did not hear you say Blingdon yeah, Stone. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna say that ever again. <laughs> For all of us to end up with a river. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, sorry, this guy seems out. to be kind of driving a hard bargain. Maybe we go check out the, uh, the smaller dealer down there. Yeah, uh, that you, sounds you, you look back and you can see uh, this guy has crates and crates of, uh, of most likely weapons and ammunition. Uh, this guy appears to have a small shop. He, he couldn't possibly supply you with all the weapons you need. Uh, he, he might be able to get you about like 10. Um, yeah, maybe about 10 weapons. Okay, I'm gonna. But consider, considering you require about um, about you know, like 120. And how much do you think is in a crate of weapons? Uh, he would probably give you like a cask or or like a small uh, thing of weapons if you if you require them. Okay. Uh, but you might be able to ask. Well then, I'm gonna ask the dude if he wants to trade a keg of ale for a keg full of weapons. He he kind of gives her a smile. And says, um, that's, that sounds reasonable. Uh, you see him, you see him kind of snap his fingers, and this guy comes, goes back, and he starts putting, uh, glaives and, and spears into a, into a very long kind of, uh, uh bundle. I'm gonna um, ask him to throw in a few throwing knives. Throwing daggers. Uh, he gives a smile and says, uh, that'll, that'll be, uh, maybe you can throw in some more wine. And, uh, as this guy comes over here and, Hands, You'll have hands to over get a bundle. Buddy in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> he gives us a smile. Uh, so this guy, this guy is carrying a uh, a bushel of uh, spears. Uh, spears and uh, pole arms, more like. Uh, I guess if you need help, I'll help him get into the sure. car. Uh, he he, Actually, he okay. hands it he hands it to Calabar, and you see this guy come over and and kind of hold his hands open for the uh, the keg. Yeah. I'm gonna grab the keg from the back and roll it around. Cool. Uh, uh, this guy grabs onto it. And he starts rolling it forward and puts it behind him. All right. So that you know, said a bushel of spears and then some other like glaives and stuff. Uh, no, it's just a just a bushel of spears. You got about ten. Got about spears. ten spears in there. Okay, so that's a start. <laughs> he gives you, he gives you a nod and then he kind of goes back to his business. Now, do either of these uh, arms dealers have a uh, armor? Um, armor you can most likely get from the guy down here who sells armor. Alright. Okay, well, we should go get Killy and some new armor. Leather worker. In case, you're, in case you're a rogue and need leather. There we go. So yeah, let's go down to the leather worker, get Killy and some new armor. Grab the cart. As you're clearly dragging the cart around. <laughs> cool. Okay, eventually you get to this guy. He uh, he gives yeah, you a smile. Me, this cart's not getting any lighter. <laughs> well, we That's got true. Of, we got rid of the keg, but we did get all this. Yeah, and we gained a load of wood and metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. You can't drink a spear. Cool. Uh, this guy says, hey there. You guys are back. Hey, so, do you have any uh, leather armor? Uh, he, he kind of points into his shop, and you see there's a couple hanging on the rack. You interested in uh, any salt? Uh, you see him kind of scratch his uh, scratch his head and a little bit and goes, "Yeah, sure, I could, I could manage that." How does uh, how does one bag sound? Uh, he kind of looks back and sees the bag. He's like, oh, "I want to see it first. I go yeah. around and uh, cool. I guess I'll get a bag and bring it back to him. Cool. Uh, he, he he kind of opens up the bag and you see him kind of shove his hand into it and it kind of. They like come out and reach, and he kind of opens up his hand with a big, uh, big pile of salt. Kind of falls out and says, "Good, 
I've had people sell me dirt before with salt on the top. Ain't falling for that again. Uh, he, he, he says sure, and he, he grabs onto a, uh, a leather, a piece of leather armor, and he kind of puts it up against your body and says, yeah, this should fit you. So that leaves us with 20 sacks of salt now? So I'll, uh, I'll throw that armor on. Cool. Uh, yep, 20 sacks. Yeah, 20. Cool. Okay, um, I'd like to talk to you, this gnome over here. Cause cool. don't they not like gnomes here? Perhaps. Ask him where he's... Cool. Uh, you see he, he appears to be, uh, he's uh, playing some sort of small, uh, he's got a small box with a small gear. He's kind of twisting around and a little bit of music's coming out of it. Um, yep. Ask him where he's from. Uh, he says I'm from uh, a surface city called Wusenbard. Okay. He kind of looks at you and says, uh, well, with your complexion, you come from the surface too. That's correct. He says, uh, I'm Gax. Pleasure to see another surface dweller. You know, and, he kind of, and he kind of points this way and says, well, besides those uh, dirty orcs. And he says, please, please don't tell him I said that. <laughs> no problem. How much, uh, how much is our silence worth? <laughs> uh, he he kind of he kind of laughs and says, "Well, if you uh, if you want, uh, if you tell the orcs uh, what I said, they might just think you're insulting them." I'm gonna ask him if he knows anyone around here who really likes salt. Uh he kind he kind of taps his um chin, and uh, he kind of looks around and he says, "Well, what what do I get out of it?" Uh, we'll throw you a little bit three of money guesses. if you can find us a place. <laughs> yeah, three guesses. I'm, yeah. I was going to say, we can toss him some money if he can find us someone who's willing to buy it at a decent price. If you want to, sure. He'd he, he nod and agree to that. Uh, Kelbart, at this time, you notice that there is, uh, that this guy right here, the, um, large, multi-eyed creature, uh, is actually... Deeply, deeply, deeply scary bad guy, yes. Yeah, the Beholder. Uh, he clearly has in his cage, in addition to several human slaves, uh, one particular sli uh, Sir of Oh, I was going to ask about that, and I didn't, because I didn't want to know. Um, <laughs> Are we supposed to trade for that man? Or that gnome? Oh, you never know. Smurf Neblin can be bastards, too. He could be evil, and we could just leave him there. Uh, uh, this guy, Gax, Gax yeah. says, yeah, yeah, most... Most of those damn, um, damn guys are evil. And you see this guy give a nod. This guy also nods. <laughs> in, in the distance, this man nods. <laughs> Everyone's just nodding now and staring at us. Nobody, nobody likes Smurf Nevelyn. They're little bastards. Especially There's the only, uh, There was only one of them in there? Uh, you see only one, yeah. But there is a human, and uh, underneath this tent here, you see there's a couple other... You see an elf or two. Uh, maybe a drow. I'll try and catch this Smurf Neblin's attention, so I'll wave at him a bit. Yeah, uh, you, you see him kind of, uh, he kind of takes his gaze to you. How knackered does he look? Uh, quite knackered. <laughs> knackered, <laughs> even. I love it when Americans say that word. Knackered? Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's knackered. <laughs> Y'all come back now. Honestly, it'd be endless fun with the American half of my family. Endless <laughs> fun. Um, oh, I hate having to do this, but I do. Don't get thrown into the river. Yeah, I know. It, clearly, it happens. <laughs> How expensive are you, short ass? Um, you, you see him kind of, um, kind of... Ah, uh, what's the word? He kind of uh, goes goes further into the cage away from you, and as he does, you kind of look to your right and notice this large eye just looking straight at you. Okay, right, well. very, very close to your face. I'll try not to shit myself. Uh, give me a wisdom saving throw for not. <laughs> I think that'd be a strength attack. <laughs> oh, no, it's... No, if he wanted to, that would be, that would be like, strengthening your bowels, but to not do it... You need to. Uh... Uh oh, wisdom! Yay, bonus! Yeah. <laughs> Shit is yeah. So you, you make any difference? Yeah. You guys hear a small little twit come out. <laughs> um, as as this open and close. 
as this creature comes forward and, and greets you. It says, greetings, small dwarf. I'm going to stand up next to Kelvin. Yeah. You, can, you can jump on the cart and kind of go over him. I don't want to like get him out, like make him uncomfortable. Scary sure, sure. Um, as you as you get that close, as you as you get kind of into a position where you can see him, you see about three tiny stalks uh, with eyes on the end, kind of all turn and face you. I'm gonna wave at him. Yeah, you you wave at him, and you see about three more from the other side turn and face you as well. <laughs> they're, they're all blinking and just kind of looking at you, examining. I'm just gonna just I don't even move. Yeah. Like I'm <laughs> just cool. stand completely still. Uh Sui so says, Are you interested in my wares? The shorty. Mm. He he smiles and says, Very good one that says he's a gem crafter. Oh really? He nods. Mm. Or, well he's a giant ball, so it's hard to tell. His whole body you see you nods. see him he blinks in agreement. It's One long, slow blink. From his perspective, yeah, what he'll have just witnessed from my entire body language will have been me going from cringing in fear but covering it as well as best I can to completely losing that and suddenly being very interested in what he said. No. So, um, how much? He says, very, very rare. Snurf Nibblin, not a, not, um, what's it called? Not creatures to us anymore. So very, well, so very, so uh, human rights non-existent. So very uh, expensive. Well, yeah, people do tend to kill them whenever they see them. He nods, blinks slowly. Whatever. They are the bastards. He says, uh, "How much do you have?" You see, you see, his eyes start to turn over and look at look at your wares, up and down. Um, if I may have a moment to consult with my uh, esteemed colleagues. He nods. <laughs> Far away from him. Yes. <laughs> um, as you guys get over here, you see this this particular slimy creature start to get a little bit protective. Oh, no, as a kind of so scared of the beholder, I didn't even bloody notice him. Yeah. This, right. this this little octopus also starts to work its way over to you slowly. Just a little slap slap, slap yeah, slap. Back a little bit. Just a bit. You. <laughs> right. Well, uh, the way I see it is this: a gem uh, crafter can cut gems. Uh, Gak and says, "Yeah, that's true." Even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, for God's sake! He's even for some reason he's in your huddle. I'll just accept it. <laughs> Even an already cut gem can be recut to be worth more. So our two cases could become much more valuable? If he's any good at his job. Not only that, but but you said are... he's an an a prick, so... <laughs> or you said, what are they called? Mif mif mif? Sniff nibbler. Yep. To be fair, I am mostly saying that because, and I'll whisper this point, I don't really want anybody to think I even like him. Fair um, you, you hear Gax kind of say, yeah, yeah, I don't like him either. Wait, yeah, what? Yeah, thanks, Gax. <laughs> okay. I mean, if I'd have been really thinking this through and paying attention and been on the ball and, you know, an experienced role player or anything. Yeah, role playing, <laughs> says Gax. I more interest in one of the other creatures in the cage and then tried to get the Smurf Nevelin as a throw-in. Hmm. Well, if you think that you can bargain for him, I'm fine with separating with salts if you think we can... Good God, that. though. That thing can disintegrate me just by looking at it. I'm not going to try <laughs> and slightly. I don't... Um, I, in fact, I wouldn't even bother bargaining. If I tried to barter with him, he'd say 100. I'd say 110. <laughs> well, let's see, uh, let's see how much uh, salt, if at all... He, uh, he wants for the little guy. Okay, we'll just tell him that we have a bunch of salt, and we want to trade it for him? Yeah. So, sounds like a plan. And you can do the talking, Kelber. Oh, for God's sake. You, you're already friends with him. You've got a nice rep for going. 
mutual hate for uh, Sniff Neblin? You know, if you, if you guys are my minions, he'll kill you first, just to make the point to me. True. <laughs> just, I'm just saying. Watch out, or this will happen to you. Disintegrate your ally. Yeah. I think if we piss him off, order of death isn't yeah. really the biggest concern. This is, this Ar is true. Already it's one like down. Instantaneous seconds, isn't it? Or maybe order would be the only concern. Alright. Okay. You reapproach. He gives you a, he gives you a, a, a gnawing smile with these jagged, sharp teeth. Here's the deal. He's only of value to me if I can obtain him without having to use the gems in this cart. Look at he he kind of looks and says there there are other things we could trade for. This is what I'm thinking. But if I were to give you the gems, then he would no longer have value to me, which takes them off the table in a trade. He says very well. So, fancy some salt. He says how much for him? I'm gonna whisper to Kelbar and just say like his weight in salt. Huh? Sounds pretty good. Does sound cool. Does sound cool. <laughs> and he hasn't eaten for a while. Oh. Once again, note that one of those ten pound bags worth about five hundred silver. Ah, yeah, on second thoughts. Uh <laughs> Let's see, 500 silver, that's 5 gold, isn't it? 50. 50 gold, so 2 bags is 100 gold. 100 gold oh, wow. for a dwarf is an insane amount of money. You can have a bag and be happy with it. Well then. In fact, to be fair, 50 gold sounds entirely fair for a dwarf. Right, well, um, let's do it. So, yeah. Ooh, getting close there. My starting <laughs> position, and I'll grab a bag off the cart as I do it, and just put cool. it down in front of me. Cool, you put it down. He looks at it with many eyes. He kind of looks back to you as if waiting for more. Let's see. See, this is the problem with a hard sell, with something that can kill you by blinking. Uh, <laughs> I'll go on then. I'll haul a second back out. Cool. He looks yeah. down at it again, and the same thing seems to happen. I can't say. I will, with deep, deep reluctance, take out a third bag, heft it in my hands thoughtfully, and then put it down with the other two. Cool. Make eye contact uh, with each of its eyes. Yeah, his, his, his eyes, he kind of gets really close to your face, and you can feel his kind of stinking breath. He says, uh, deal, as you see the bags begin to float and fly over into his, uh, into his little area there. Um, the, the door opens up, um, the Snurf Nebula just is flung out, out of it. Uh, where? I'm gonna do this all in as swift a move as I possibly can. I'm gonna grab him, yeah, yep. roughly, and I'm gonna throw him in the back of the cart. Cool. Yeah. Oh, As I'm doing it, I'm gonna throw a uh, cure light wound. Cool. A heal light wound? Yeah. Cool. Give me a roll roll. Uh, what kind of roll do you want? I oh, just, just want just, the... Just for the heal. Yep. Yeah. 2d8 plus 2. Cool. Uh, it would be 2d8 actually. Assuming you're not doing the uh, the the word, that's that's the heal. Nice. Okay, so you heal him for about uh, ten hit points. <laughs> cool. So uh, so you 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 slam him against the ground. He's like, man, I feel great. Yeah, that was, basically I want him to get get to understand that he's not, you know, in bad hands. But I don't want anybody else to know. If you can see where I'm coming from. Yeah. He, 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 uh, he kind of gets it. You see him kind of start hiding underneath the, um, the blanket. Good boy. Right, now we need some gem cutting tools. 
Um, you figure that gem cutting would take several hours, did you, even on a single gem. Yeah, but I'm greedy, and I don't really care. And <laughs> it's a plan, so I mean, if, even if we, for the next few months, all we've got is this guy sat in the back of the cart, chipping away at gems every night. <laughs> That's money, actually. And we are I gonna back Calabar's idea completely. <laughs> yeah, I we agree. We get sense of sort of a, a, a camaraderie developing between us here. <laughs> so as far as far as he knows now, he thinks he is just a slave again. Yeah. Well, we haven't set him free yet. He still is. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's most certainly on. Uh, he still has chains on his hands. He still believes he's a slave. <laughs> Let's get away from the horrible, scary thing. Uh, close yeah. to some other horrible. Uh, scary he he kind of speaks slowly. Says the worthful. Thanks you. Uh, the worthful. Oh, the big eye. Okay. Should we uh, go down here next to Gax the gnome? Oh, are those uh, are those crappy gems still like, just chilling on the floor there? Or? Uh, I, one of you would have picked them up. The thing is, right. if, if scrubbing in the dirt for a bunch of gems that she's thrown on the floor doesn't look very cool. <laughs> Mind you, at the moment we're not the coolest bunch in the world. <laughs> Our buddy just got thrown in the river. <laughs> That's it. Hilarious. We left our uh, Snurf Neblin behind. The, river as well. the Snurf Neblin's not behind, he's inside there. Okay. He's chained to the cart, he ain't going nowhere. Oh, I mean, just on my screen he was like on the ground behind it. There we yeah. Go. Now it makes sense, I was confused. <laughs> okay, um, so we still need weapons, we need to get a set of gem cutting tools. <laughs> and, uh, profit. <laughs> at least, at least you have two steps in there. It's not take get get gnome. Step three is profit. So, I guess we can ask Gax since he's our buddy if he knows where we can get some <laughs> gem cutting tools. Since he liked being a part of our huddle before, Actually, and we didn't wrap him up. About to be incredibly useful for a cut. Yeah, he's gonna tell us uh, where we could ditch some of this salt. Yeah. What's left of it? Yeah, I say if he can get us a good enough price. What's left? We still got bags. seventeen. Yeah. Cool. I say if he can get us a good enough price, we'll cut him in for like two percent of our profit. Two percent, he says. Well, there's four of us. I say twenty-five percent is fair. And, and he says, and honestly, I'll, I'm the one doing all the work. Fifty percent seems fair to me. I say that it's gonna be like a hundred gold, so if we sell it and you got two percent, two gold's plenty for your little tiny gnome behind. You're both the same size. Yeah, that's what makes it so much more pointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he kind of shrugs and seems disinterested. I'll tell you what, little guy. <clears throat> he, he gets on his tippy toes and he's as tall as you. Yeah, but I bet I could pound him in the snow. <laughs> I've seen it. I'm a dwarf. I'm a dwarf, he's a gnome. We're hard, they're not. That's the way it works. <laughs> we bash things, they cast spells. Done. How Great. Me and my friends here. It seems like we're the kind of guys that could be doing this sort of thing quite a lot. And it also seems like that this is the kind of place where we're going to go to get rid of the kind of stuff that we naturally come across, such as, in this case, a cart full of bloody salt. And when we do that, we're going to need friends who are going to get a cut in all the stuff we do. So it would be helpful if that friend asked for a cut that wasn't fucking rude. What do you think? Uh, he, he, he kind of shrugs as, maybe you're right, but... uh. But I'm not taking anything less than ten percent. And I see now that's fair. There we go. Yeah, it's no. Rip -off, but it's fair. Yeah, he says, okay, so uh so what exactly are you selling? I'd show him the cart. <laughs> uh he looks at the cart and he sees a uh, Sniff Neblin and a uh and a well, it would just be a couple bags of salt and two chests of uh of gems and a, a thing of weapons, and he says, uh, what exactly are you guys trying to get? 
tell him we either want money for the salt, or if he can get us a good deal on weapons for salt, we'd be willing to take that too. Uh, he, he says, um, you want money for the salt, he points over to this guy here, and um, he says this guy, uh, he's pretty rich, and he'll, um, he'll generally sell you things like, uh, like just straight up gold bars. Just don't get the salt too close yeah. to the slug. <laughs> he kind of laughs and he says, uh, but, um, but he, he doesn't like salt. Salt's not something's after. Uh, he kind of points back, where, back and you can see uh, there's like statues and among the creatures and there's crates. Uh, you look at his stuff and they seem to be more like, um, it seems to be more like a, like a, like a nice place than a trading place, like somewhere just for him to hang out. Uh, you assume he's quite wealthy. Um, yeah, he, he, he says, but, uh, he, he wants stuff, he wants things like, you know, magic scrolls or healing potions or, or art. It's also a toss of a coin, which is more scary, him or the beholder. Hmm. They're scary, yeah. He says that I've, I've never seen him speak, though. And also, for the record, isn't the salt that we got from the man we're doing this trading for, wasn't that part, like, our payment, too? Or was the salt, uh... That, that, that was payment for the ale he gave him. Yeah. And then the gems were payment for the... Yeah. He, he gave you 50 gold worth of salt as your payment for doing this. Okay. And that's that's up to you what you want to do. What you did is you bought yourself armor that you had to rip off you. That was what you did with your cut, essentially. Yeah. So we still have it's like 10 bags of salt, which would have been his for wool, well, minus what we traded for the spears. Yeah. We traded our ale for that. So like say eight bags of salt left that are technically his that we're free to get rid of in order to get weapons still, and then the rest can be profit. <laughs> profit. Uh, we, yeah, you, you did use about three of them on, what, on this guy here, on the on the dome. I was gonna say yeah. seventeen bags left from cool. what I Cool. Yeah. Counted. And you also have two casts of gems. Yeah, two gems and then the ten spears, and Killian's shiny new leather armor. I guess profit. it's not shiny, but new profit armor. buys by down a whole crate of gems, but <laughs> yeah, because we had to go fishing for a dead body. <laughs> oh yeah, we have a grappling hook as well. Yeah, that was that was a two hundred and fifty gold piece grappling hook. Hope it's just as a breath six small sidebar. It dawns on me I might be using just a tad more information than my character would have out of pure. Habit um, no, no, I, I think it's completely reasonable what you have in saying so uh, far. Just, cover that, just to cover it, I've got a history skill that I'm probably not going to use. If you can swap it for underworld knowledge, <laughs> then I'll just about cover it. Um, history, underworld knowledge, all the same, whatever. Yep. Cool. Once again, I, I play by a rule of cool. I'm beginning to feel a tad guilty about it. No, no. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just happy you're not, if, as long as you're not like, um, like trying to take all the time away from all the players. I, I've seen people be like, I talked to this guy. Okay, now I talk to this guy. Okay, now I talk to this guy, and then the three people just sit in the back, but because he's not giving him a second to talk. That's what annoys me. But um, you you just keep doing what you're doing, and it'll be great. Oh, I'm just happy to be gaming, mate. Believe me, all of you. Okay, so uh, so what do you do? What do you guys do? Uh, Gax is yeah, Ga Gax is ready to give you information. Uh, for a cut. All right. Um, I say if Gax can get rid of however much of this salt we want to sell for money and then just buy weapons straight up. Hmm. Uh, he, kind of, he kind of looks back and forth. He says, well, uh, if, if you go over to these drow, they, uh, I know they like to buy salt and spices. Oh, we're friends yeah. with them. <laughs> this is good. Um, he, 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 kind of, he kind of looks around and says, uh, now these things are worth about, uh, worth about, uh, what, like, um, about like 100 gold for every two bags. And uh, that's that's generally what um, all of their packages are worth. Any of their art they try to sell you, or or um, or five slaves, or or some of their spell scrolls. That's uh, generally what it's worth. Five slaves for a bag of salt. Ah, uh, for two bags of salt. Two bags of salt. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Anyone? Go, uh... He's, he's gotta use his noodle. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got, I got five bags on... Five slaves for two bags of salt. What else did they say they have? They have packages? Scrolls? Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're like a spell scroll. It'll probably cost you about a, a hundred, um... hundred gold. Um, as well as... What else do they have? Let me just take a gander. Some art, you said, I think? 
Uh, yeah, they, they appear to have some some art pieces like they they like to sell. So what we need to do is get the stuff from the drow and sell it to the mind flayer. Yeah, they also sell healing potions. Um, you can get about two for uh, they get one about one per bag. Um, they also uh, they also sell slaves and poison. You can get about five do doses for uh, two of these bags. Can you imagine how absolutely horribly dreadful drow art must be? <laughs> black on black. It's beautiful. We like spiders and people in pain and different colors of dried yeah. blood. Uh, they're, they're, they'll probably get spiders to do the art artwork itself, so it'll all be made out of silk. Oh man. Like a silk tapestry that's got to be worth something. Remind yeah. me of something. When you guys get to know me a little better, to tell you the tale about the drow campaign I ran. There's a story I'll tell you, it's scary, but it's related. Okay, <laughs> okay so what are you guys' plans? Um, um, go, uh, talk to I, vote, I vote we go for spell scrolls, because they're not heavy and I'd pull the cart now. Deal. I say we go trade some of our salt, get some spell scrolls. Cool. Maybe, uh, maybe pick up a couple of slaves. Or... I mean, are these... What type of slaves are they? Uh, you look over there, and with your little halfling eyes, uh, you can see they appear to be mostly human and drow, and and um, you see a couple of half-orcs. Hmm. Okay. Oh, we could buy a drow slave and kill it. And again, what is the <laughs> and what is the uh, the mind player sell again, or does he sell anything? Um, you can't you kind of look um at the display. You can see he's, he's also selling slaves. Um, slaves, and slaves. Yeah. In addition, he appears to be also selling um, he's selling pure gold. Yeah, he he also sell. You also see some uh, some pounds, some gold, and some uh, silver, uh, kind of um on display. Uh, you you assume well, he you assume he's, uh, he sells just straight up uh, currency. Okay. So, well, if we so want to cash out some of our salt, we could get some scrolls from the drow and sell them to the mind flayer for gold. Yeah, scrolls or either or whichever. All right. As long as I don't. Because have... <laughs> he was interested okay. in the bulk, correct? Well, well, since uh, I think, in all fairness, I've already been responsible for flogging off three sub three bags of salt for something of dubious value. So I think, hey, that that little guy's gonna cut up all our gems, don't you, worry. Oh yeah, what? Well, can we ask our little friend here where uh, we can get some tools? Some what? Some gem cutting tools. He, oh, um, he kind of looks around and he says, um, if anyone had some, it might be the uh, the armorer. Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be exactly what you need, but they should do. Uh, the clanker over here or Kirkin would probably have it. Hey, well, let's get money. I just thought of a really cool magic item. Yes, a gem cutting hammer that always gets the first touch perfect. <laughs> Smash it, perfect cuts. Just the first cut. Anyway, we get him. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go, go uh, get some have, a, have our little Gax friend lead us over there so he can earn his coat. Cool. Uh, Gax, Gax kind of leads you over here, and uh, he he kind of just he kind of uh, approaches you, approaches the girl, and they kind of you see him kind of wave his arms over to you as if presenting you. Rick will let you do the talking. Okay, I'm gonna uh, approach her and say, "Hey, remember us?" <laughs> she, she nods. She says, "How that uh, how that item treat you?" Uh, good. Got a nice, refreshing swim, and now I'm ready to try and sell some of this salt. Ah, uh, you see her kind of take her hand. She starts going for her neck, your neck. Going for my neck? Yeah, with with one of her hands. I'm gonna back away. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, um, she's doing. You, you see Kirkin kind of uh, grab at your neck from behind and he pulls off a leech. Oh. Yeah. Thank uh, you. you take one point of damage. Oh, excellent. <laughs> she says, I am, uh, I am Eralda. 
Arelda? She nods. I am of I am of I am of House Hiteth. You are. My name is Rexul Homeforger, and I'm a merchant selling salt. And these are my friends Killian, Kelabar, and Grat or Gax. He nods. Hello. We we heard you like salt. She shrugs. Uh, that was more friendly than you were earlier, so I'll take that as a good sign. Um, did you want to buy some salt? Ah, uh, she says, well, what do you want for it? We're looking to trade for scrolls or any type of, like, fine art. She says, I, I got that. I do. What types of scrolls do you have? Uh, she kind of says, uh, evocation, necromancy, illusion, whatever you want. Hmm. Um, I think I want to consult with my group for a second. Uh, I don't really know exactly what we want to get from her. Well, we maybe, uh, feel her out and see, uh, See what her prices are and see which one we can get more of. You, you can never really go wrong with healing or cure spells. Healing and cure spells? Yeah, everybody always wants healing and cure spells. Fair enough. Okay. But that's just a rule of thumb. Anything will do. Yeah. Okay, well, if we were to trade you for some of your scrolls, um, what type of exchange would you give us on salt? Uh, she says, well, um, what are you thinking? Uh, hmm. I have no idea how much scrolls are worth. I don't tell this to her. Yeah, I was gonna say, she's gonna give you a smile if you say that. <laughs> like, oh, no, I'll help you, buddy, no problem. Just give me four of those bags and I'll give you a... Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Half a scroll. Yeah. Yeah. You get two, two of these halves and you got full scrolls, man. I'm gonna whisper with Killian a little bit. Like, uh, she has improved perception, so go ahead. I was gonna say, like, she's still an elf. Know what we're doing. Yeah, she's still an elf. Um, yeah, I think we could change you, like, a scroll per bag of salt. Uh, she gives out a laugh. She was like, I was thinking more like three bags per scroll. Um, I don't like reading scrolls that much. She, she kind of shrugs and says, well, it's a bit of a problem now. One scroll for three bags, we can get five slaves for two. That's a good point. She says you want slaves? Um. <laughs> we just kind of hear Kelbar like, whimper over there. <laughs> oh, I want slaves so badly. <laughs> so many oh. slaves. Um, I'll tell you that three, three is much too high. We won't be able to get what we need if we trade her three bags of salt for each scroll. Like she cares. <laughs> what he says. <laughs> hmm. well, how much, uh, how much, uh, is that, uh, art gonna cost us? That depends on what you're looking at. Uh, she kind of snaps her fingers and you see him bring over some... Like a small statue, whether of a spider and a snake, and uh, she brings you a portrait of a uh, of the Underdark, just all black. Do they have any art involving slugs or snails? <laughs> um, none that you see. Yeah, you you look at the painting of the Underdark, which is once again just pure black, and you think maybe there's a snug slug in there somewhere. <laughs> oh dear, I'm so glad it's not you know fine art. I was supposed to find. <laughs> okay, how about if we do two bags of salt for one of your scrolls? She kind of sighs and says, uh, I think we could do that. Alright, now. Uh, how, how many scrolls do you want? Um, Killian? Kelbar? Any input? How many do you think we'll need? 
to barter with uh, the Mind Flayer. I think we need to make this as painless as possible, so let's get rid mm -hmm. of ten of these bags. <laughs> you just want it to be very light. Uh, this, I that. Yeah, so get rid of ten bags. Cool. I say, I say she throw in a piece of art for, yeah. for, for that bulk buy. She says, sure, why don't you throw another bag of those gems? <laughs> we don't have any bags of gems, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, crate of gems, or a uh, case of gems. <laughs> We've already got too much invested in those gems, we cannot See, start with them. All of the reason that I said 10, and we get this done as quickly as possible, is the fewer of these trades where we're talking to creatures that are hideously, hideously dangerous, and we accidentally say something that results in them chopping off our heads, is reduced. <laughs> 10 bags for 5 scrolls it is. Shad, she gives you a nod. Uh, okay, and do we have any choice of scrolls, or are these just random scrolls? Um, she, she says you can give us some choice. Uh, she starts looking through, just, uh, what kind do you want? You want uh, oh. evocation, abjuration, necromancy? Well, do you have anything that involves healing? Uh, she picks up a few things, she says, yeah, sure. And maybe one of those necromancy ones. <laughs> Uh, she she kind of laughs. And says, okay, sure. Does anyone else have any preference before I just buy random things? It's all good. All right. So yeah, a cool. healing one, necromancy, and okay, cool. Uh, she she hands these over to you. Uh, you see two of these scrolls are of uh of cure wounds. Now uh, one of these scrolls is a fairy fire. Uh, another one appears to be the spell um. Entangle, and the final one uh, appears to be the spell um, Purify Food and Drink. It's always Purify Food and Drink on a random roll. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna hand over 10 bags of salt. Cool, uh, her horse, her soldiers pick them up and throw them in the back. She gives you a nod. Excellent. Well, thank you for being so, uh, so generous. No. Uh, generous. She says. She says thanks for the uh, for trading me a, a a case of gems for just a little thing. Yeah. Wait, case no of gems? Problem. I thought it was ten bags of salt. No, you, you, oh, you oh, before, okay. before, yeah. <laughs> Four I was like, wait, I didn't give away another one, did I? <laughs> So we're gonna go over here. I think uh, Kelbar or Killian, if you want to uh, lead up the bartering with Slugface, I don't say that out loud, um, with this very fine gentleman uh, and try and get. Oh, uh, 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 Kelbar? I don't think it's a very good idea if that thing starts creeping around in my mind. Oh yeah, uh, she's a mind fairy reads minds, so it's not good. I'll, I'll go up and talk to him, I suppose. Yeah, I'll stand behind Killian for support. <laughs> Here, I'll stand you don't there. want to get too close, though. Yeah, yeah there, there we go. So, so I hear... Uh, uh, I'll back you up this time, Killian. What was that, Killian? I said, uh, I hear you're uh, interested in uh, scrolls. Uh, he does not seem to respond. Just think it really hard. Alright, yeah. Concentrate really hard. So. How much also, gold. Oh, I, I guess I don't know. Also, Gax, is he still gonna come with us or does he just kinda hang out with the drow? Uh, Gax is trying to hit on these drow wound. <laughs> oh, the ones, the ones maintaining the circle, of making you all not die. Yeah, distract them for us, Gax. Let's, let's do that. Okay. Uh, we, we you saying? Yeah, the same. We got five scrolls here. Uh, you interested? Uh, you get no response. Who's this guy here? Just to my left? 
Uh, you see this appears to be uh, Earl, the uh, the Dugar, the Drugar, or also known as a Deep um, Deep Dwarf. Uh, he is selling arms and armor. Oh, I love Drugar. <laughs> um, I'll uh, try and catch his attention. Sure. Uh, yeah, Cillian, you're reading your chat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Just making sure. Uh... Uh, so we, he says greetings. You looking for a sword? Fellow bearded one. Um, what's with the? Oh, point me thumb over me of my shoulder at the flyer. Yeah. He he kind of shrugs. Is he always this mysterious? He nods. He says, "Yep, every time." Okay. Uh, what do you do, Cillian? He's got lots of gold, you said? Invisible? Like, it's, he has a bunch? Um, it appears to be in his, uh, you can see a couple on display. Uh, like, uh, this, this statue is holding some in the air. Um, you see, you see, like, a little two-ounce thing of gold. Um, or is it, or it would be, like, a, like a two-pound bar, I suppose. And, uh, you see some silver as well. How many, uh... How many bars of uh, gold are you uh, willing to separate with for these fine scrolls? I'm gonna take a uh, you get... look at Killian because he doesn't seem to have done much for a while. <laughs> All right. I'm, yeah. Um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna retreat real quick and uh, consult with. Uh, sure. Uh, once again, you get you get you get no response. Yeah. So I'm gonna whisper to these guys. Uh, he's offering. Uh, one bar, uh, one bar of scroll. How you feel about that? I'm gonna. Do I have a knowledge of how much gold a bar of gold is? Worth? Um, a bar of two pound uh, of gold would be about a hundred gold pieces. Okay, so we need to get at least one bar per scroll, otherwise we're losing money. Yeah. So, so we're getting that now. Do, do I dare? Right there. Haggle with him. Haggle. <laughs> ah. Considering he's probably already like reading your mind, I'd say no. But all do right. we want to do we want to trade all five or do we want to keep some like the cure wounds? He gives him some uh, purify food and drink. <laughs> um. Yeah. Like, do we have? A... Get rid of... Well, I think scroll of cure wound is pretty cool. So I mean, I'd say we should hang on to maybe one of those, and I'm the other ones. I'm happy uh, when healing shared out. What's that? I'm always happy when the healing shared out. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. If he's willing to take the fairy fire and purify food and drink, and maybe the entangle, and we can just keep all the healing stuff. All right. Unless I don't know. I mean, I don't know how good entangle is or fairy fire. I don't really know what those do. Uh, I mean, well, I can imagine what Entangle does, but... They're roughly first level spells. Okay. Then, yeah. yeah so is so wants... Cure Wounds. She was, see, yeah. if you want, see if he wants she was Fairy Fire. She Fairy Fire, because she can cast that naturally. Ooh. She's, she's short-handed in this. I don't go uh, just a, a little drow in joke. It's something she can do naturally when, since she was born. Ah. Uh, yeah, Killian, if you think, I think that we should do the Fairy Fire and Tango and Purify Food Drink. Alright, um... That sounds good. So, uh... We'll, uh, make that deal for, uh, the Entangle Fairy Fire and Purify Food and Drink, if you're interested. Mr. Mind Player. Uh, he doesn't seem to, uh, respond. Although you do see a couple of these, these slugs start to flank you. I walk over and take a close look at that slug. Uh, <laughs> let me know when I have to hit something. It's just the uh, these guys are here for the scrolls, I would imagine. Uh, you, so, you see, you see them you try to try to start grasping at you. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll I'll grab the scrolls off the the wagon. Cool. And throw them on the floor next to the slugs. 
cool. Careful not to get any salt on those scrolls. <laughs> right. Well, we the, kill the, his little men. the slugs sure. pick them up and they and they return to uh, to where they whence they came. Uh, one of these uh, one of these kind of tendrilling uh, crawling octopi uh, crawls up to you. He kind of just comes up and you kind of feel him feeling against your face, all all of your faces. He's just kind of feeling you guys up before he eventually goes back to where he came. Uh, you look, you look down the ground and see underneath is where he once was is about uh, four, eight, twelve, about twelve bars of silver. Do we Wait. not get any extra for being violated? <laughs> uh, you 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 don't think um, you don't think these guys can uh, can smile, but you assumed you assume he did. And just so I understand, it's 12 bars silver, which is worth how much in gold? Uh, you, you, you give it 12, like 5 pound, I think it was about 5 pound bars, it looks like. They, they definitely look bigger than the uh, the other ones. Okay. Yeah, uh, you think he's trying to swindle you. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought we were getting gold bars. Yeah. Uh, you do know that, um, you kind of weigh it, because these are 5 pound bars, you you were asking for 2 pound bars. You definitely think this this is about the same trade. But uh, you think he wants to uh, keep hold on to his gold? Uh, you know that these bars are the same; will be worth the same, though. Hey, uh, I thought we had a deal for gold bars here. Uh, he doesn't appear to respond to you at all. Don't antagonize the illicit. <laughs> Don't let him push you around, Killian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still yeah, he's just a horrible there. Cthulhu wannabe. <laughs> That's just gonna say he looks like a Cthulhu. <laughs> it might be the same, but you said you said gold and deal's a deal. Uh, you don't really see any response. He just, he just, he just, he, he just sits there with, uh, with his blank expression on his face. You know what, his... silver's not that bad, uh, I think we're good. I'm just gonna kind of look at Killian, questioning him, and just I'll... shrug my shoulders. I think I'll back up a little bit, too. I'm gonna follow his lead. Cool. Thanks for not starting a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to have to go on the lake It, it would have ended in the lake, yeah. <laughs> so, throw the uh, throw the silver onto the cart. Cool. Ching 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 ching. It would be a sad that? thing to learn our lesson in not backing up our previous mate by backing up our current mate and dying horribly anyway. <laughs> right. Cool. So you have uh, now a bunch of silver. Plan? Pla oh, no one said anything about a plan. Oh. We go see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how much. Uh, Maybe we can get some uh, weapons, weapons now. With that that sounds like a great idea to me. I'm gonna make my way over to the. I was just shifting out of the way of everyone. I wasn't particularly going anywhere. I'm gonna like, try to find something neutral. Yeah. Uh, you, you 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 approach. You see, he's back there. Two of the guys kind of uh in the way. Um, Kelbar, you wanna lead up the trade on this one? No, he hates me. I'm a dwarf. You already a nice repertoire with him, Rickman. Okay. Um, I'll approach, uh, one second. Grimdar, and I'll say, hey, Grimdar. Uh, uh he's, he's kind of far away. He's actually talking to someone, too. Uh, this oh, guy kind of, st there. this guy kind yeah. of stops you, and he's like, what do you, what do you need? Yeah, I thought that was it. Um, I'm gonna ask this guy if we can talk to Grimdar. Uh, he, he says, um, depends on how much you have. Well, before we had salt and he didn't like it very much, and now we come with, uh, silver. Mm. And we'd like to try and make some trades now. Yeah. Uh, although Grimdar is a lot more cooler, uh, you see this guy kind of betray, quickly betray, um, how much they want silver. And, um, he kind of nods and, and, uh, they kind of go back and... You see Grimdar come forward eventually after he's been called. There's greetings. Okay. 
I was told you wanted to trade. Yeah, Grimdar. Um, since we still need about ten times as many weapons, isn't if I'm correct, um, we'd like to do some more trading. Very well. And this time we've brought a little bit of silver with us instead of salt. He smiles and says, "Smart man." <laughs> um, how much would you charge us for? Uh, ten times the amount you gave us last time, but in a variety of different weapons, and not just spears. Uh, he kind of shrugs and said it would be uh, it would be a lot. I uh, I'll, I I can sell them by the bushel, but ten weapons apiece. Okay, and so we're talking like what? I'll, Two I'll bushels for five pounds of silver. <laughs> Uh, he laughs and says no. It would be more like, uh, let's see here. Um, he would say that uh, you you give him about uh, four five pound bars, and uh, he'll give you. He kind of actually says no. How about five 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 pound bars, and I'll give you uh, one of the bundles. Five five pound bars for one bundle of he nods. weapons. Absolutely not. <laughs> that's that's a rip off. He There's shrugs. No way I'm gonna do that. Says, "Well, I, I guess you're not getting weapons today." And he kind of points this way and says, uh, "Try try Earl. He was uh, exiled a long time ago." And he kind of says, "Okay, go ahead, scoot." Go now. <laughs> I'm gonna take a step back, I guess, and talk with my party because yeah. uh, we definitely he, aren't gonna get what we need. Well, uh, he he kind of sits, sits here and he, he crosses his arms. He's he's not moving. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk to my party and tell them that there's no way we're gonna get what we need uh, selling it one bushel of weapons for five five pound bars <laughs> at a time. Yo, the chief, what we doing? Uh, it doesn't sound very uh, economical, considering what we just went through. Well, no, and even if we did it, even if we traded the rest of our salt, get rid of all of our profits, there's no way that we would end up with enough money to get enough weapons to take them back and well, be broke. I suppose there's two things we can do. We can, A, talk to the dodgy merchant on his own. Uh, talk, talk to you, was it? The, the other mer the other weapon merchant. Okay. And B, we can clip that little fucking gnome around the ear and ask him. To... Oi. Gex or Gax? Uh, he's, he's chat up the drow and come here. Ah, uh, he's he's not paying attention to you. He's he's pretty busy with the drow. You have to get closer. Can we walk over there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Kelbar said, literally, sure. like, grab him by the ear. <laughs> sure, um, you approach, and he said, you hear him saying, um, yeah, and it's, it was the biggest in all of my village. And then you kind of grab him by the, by the <laughs> collar and start dragging him away. <laughs> Alright. He says, what are you guys doing? It's this big. <laughs> well, your, uh, your little local weapon merchant here isn't giving us a very fair price on weapons. He says, well, what do you want me to do about it? Do you know anything about him that we might find useful? Well, he's a, he's a hard player, but if you play hardball back, you should be able to get what you need. Well, since the last time we talked to you, when, back when you were being useful, we got silver. He says, good. They like silver. You want weapons, right? Do you remember you're getting ten percent of this, right? He nods. Okay. So. So, uh, so, so trade him some silver. About about four of those bars should be about a about a hundred hundred gold. You should be able to trade him one per per ten weapons. Might be able to get more if you if you play hardball. <laughs> Well, uh, Kelbar, Killian, I'm not very good at playing hardball with the trading, if you couldn't tell already, so if someone else wants to 
I'll go, uh, <laughs> I'll go talk to this guy. Cool. So, How many more? How many weapons do we have already? Uh, you have ten. You have you have, you have one bushel worth 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 about a hundred GP. You were given about twelve hundred GP, um, and that that's not including uh your payment or anything you traded. Uh, that was just straight up what they gave you to trade for weapons. So. But uh, Gax was just saying that we should be able to get at least one bushel per silver bar. Um, no, he was saying if you if you trade about four silver bars, you can get about a bushel. We were doing better trade in salt than silver. Yeah, and when we brought up the silver, like the this dude. Got like perked up. Clearly, they like silver more, so shouldn't it be worth more? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do, guys. Because we need to get nine more bushels of spears. Maybe we should quit the adventuring life and open up a tavern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he never you, did you have, the guy you, with us. You do have, have a lot. You do have a lot of salt and ale. Let's let's do this. It does seem anymore. like there's no bar here. No, the, uh, you do see kegs and kegs on the uh, on the orcs. Uh, they have kegs and casks and and sacks. Yeah, be fair, who's gonna drink the well? <laughs> yeah. Do we, do we even Wait, have any? I think we got rid of all the booze. Yeah, you you have no ale. You either drank it or you uh, sold it. Didn't, wasn't one of these guys over here a? Uh... Like kind of like a leader type person. Ah, uh, yeah. You see, you see, you see the one carrying the spear, shield, and the golden armor. Uh, it appears to be a. Uh, you can notice that it's kind of like a feminine stance, but uh, besides that, you really can't. You really couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl. Oh my. Do we have any interest in talking to them? Do we think we can get anything out of them, or they would be of any use? Guys, pals. Well, the thing is, they're orcs. Out of so all they're, the so they're here, not. <laughs> I reckon I could take them. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is yes, we could probably get something out of them. Yeah. Do do notice the gigantic, uh, God. not oh, org. No, I wasn't saying I could take him. I'm I'm I'm, ju I'm just saying he, there appears to be that guy there. I'm saying you know. Oops. I forget what what, what, do I, what do I call this kind of guy again. I'm oh, not a Hulk, dang it. It's just, I find it hard to be intimidated by orcs after I've just done a deal with a Beholder. <laughs> <laughs> that may be accurate. Beholder, mind flayer. Yeah, don't get me wrong, that'll all wear off in a few time. that's what I call him. He's just an orc. Well, once again, that, that big guy back there is an Orgrim, which is half orc, half ogre. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so I'm gonna approach this guy, uh... How many bushels can uh, we get for uh, all of our silver and maybe a uh, a bag or two of salt? Uh, he says the salt's worthless to me. Um, he said I'll I'll give you two bushels for all of it. For all the salt. For all of the uh, everything you have, or ev all of your all the things you're, you just offered. Wait, but we can get a silver. bushel of weapons for four bars of silver, so we can get three for just our silver. No, he shrugs and says, fine. Three of them. No, I didn't say we oh, could. No, no. I'm just saying we could. Yep, he, once again, he shrugs and says, fine. Oh, we had the deal we were looking for right there. Go consult with uh, my partners here. The, so, are, are the gems... I know we're trying to get those cut, but... Are they honestly, off the table here? It's a cunning plan for future use, but what we really need is the weapons. All yeah, right, so. and we also have to consider our profit or us getting anything out of this adventure as well. I was kind of flying high on my ego when I bought him. Maybe uh... <laughs> it was a good deal, Calabar. Don't don't let anyone take that away from you. <laughs> maybe uh, so do do you want to offer him maybe a box of a uh, box of gems or maybe even the uh, the slave? Yeah, show him the gems. I guess show him a case of gems and see what type of interest he takes. 
and see if maybe we can get out of this with either some of the salt, some of the silver, or some of the gems. <laughs> All right. So, but if he, I mean, if maybe he really likes gems. So, uh, what's your uh, interest in gems? It says I'm a dwarf. I have gems. <laughs> <laughs> what about a uh, a I gem need... cutter? <laughs> What was that? Thank what, you. What about a, a nice uh, slave that can cut gems? No. No, no. He <laughs> says, um, he says, I'll, I'll take one of those cases for, uh, for a bushel. So, still would be. We still wouldn't have enough. <laughs> that, that gives us four. So that plus bushels. all the silver would be nine bushels. We'd be one bushel short, and we'd have a smurf neville. Wait, how would that be nine? If we did all, if we did all the silver, that'd be three yeah, bushels. Four. The gems yeah. would be two more, is five, and then we have one is six. So oh. we have six oh. bushels, seven sacks of salt, and two scrolls, and a wonderful nurse neblin. Well, if we're gonna sell the gems, we might as well sell them. The thing is, it's I hate to say it, gonna be a bit of a wander around, and we're gonna get moaned at. But if we're gonna sell the gems, we might as well sell them to the drow. Uh, if we're gonna do that, we might as well get more scrolls. Uh, if we're gonna do that, we might as well sell the scrolls to the, the Lithid. Yeah, and he's gonna rip us off for more silver, so we might as well ask for silver up front and get more of it than we would have done gold. Well, I, I don't like dealing with that, the, the mind player. He, he doesn't seem to be very honest in his dealings. The most honest person in this building is me, and would you trust me with a coin toss? Most definitely not. There you go. <laughs> uh, you do. You do remember one thing. It's the first thing you traded to the the Grimdar. The Grimdar. First thing we traded to Grimdar was alcohol. So get alcohol from the orcs. Aha! Look at that. <laughs> so. Your idea. I say you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just gonna not even pay attention to Grimdar right now. Walk yeah. past okay. him. He, he goes back. We'll be back in a second. He goes oh. back. I'm gonna approach the. Uh, did, did you actually? List. Did you guys actually buy the? Um, did you did you trade the three for three? No, we didn't trade anything yet. Not okay, sure. Yeah, I'm gonna approach so the genderless orc. Sure. And compliment it on its pretty gold armor and tell him that I am Rakul and. I see that he has a bunch of casts or kegs of some. Uh, it it starts by saying flattery flattery will get you uh, get you well, or it will do you well. And um, it says I am Tower Tower Crawl. Tower, nice to meet you. She nods. Like she nods. Yep. She. Um, I see that you have many kegs back there what pray tell would be inside of those um she says uh we have ale wine uh cheap wine if you're into that mm, not so much we have we have uh we have we have we have uh crates of fruit limes uh we have pepper ginger saffron we have some lumber in the back if you require it all, nice. all, all of uh, all the pleasures of the surface world we can sell you here if you want it, we got it. That's what it sounds like to me. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, my hometown had it. They've got it. Yeah. They've got a. Uh, they've got some uh, spices, so maybe they'll be interested in the uh, salt. Or they've already got so maybe. Uh, they, they do appear to have abundance of salt of uh, okay. power, spices. Um, I'll express some interest in her ale and say that we haven't seen any ale in a while. <laughs> We've recently um, run out and we're looking to replenish our stocks. Yeah, but I'm afraid her market for the bad wine died in the lake a few minutes ago. Uh, you see, <laughs> you see, uh, you see a human um, kind of approach her and uh, start speaking in her ear a little bit, and uh, then he goes and returns, and uh, you see her say, uh, "Apparently, you." You came in here with ale earlier, so that's a lie. 
No, I said that we recently ran out. I didn't lie and say we didn't have any. Mm. I would never lie to you. Jeez, what type Jeez. of halfling do you take me for? You, you, <laughs> you see a smile, she kind of towers over you and says, good. <laughs> uh, at, as she smiles, she, you can see these tiny little fangs. Um, yeah. You have a beautiful and, uh, smile tower. <laughs> thank you. So back to that ale. Um, are you looking to sell any of it? She says she could. And how open to you? How open to trading are you? Um, very much so. Do you have anything in particular that you find yourself lacking these days? She says, "What do you have?" Well, I've got a little bit of silver, mm, some salt. And a few gems. She shrugs. What is uh? What about those scrolls? Are they completely off the table? Well, I just don't know if it works. If she'd be interested in scrolls, how do you like scrolls, Tower? I don't like to read. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about your human friend? What of them? <laughs> Nothing. Um. Hey, Kelbar. Uh, do you want to get rid of that uh, Snurf Neblin? Oh, I do not want to get rid of my Snurf Neblin. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured the orcs might like to torture it and kill it. I'm sure they would. <laughs> and they'd like to torture and kill all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, how much? One keg. I'm gonna tell her that we'd really like to get some of her ale, and if we could get it at a reasonable price, that would be most, most good. And by reasonable, we're talking like maybe two kegs for every three bars of silver. She laughs. It's a pretty good deal, even not on the surface. She says, "I'll stop wasting my time." You see this, uh, this one. She kind of backs off, and this guy with his large shield kind of bulldozes you away. He's not as pretty as you, Tower. I don't know if I want to talk to him. Step back. He pushed me back. <laughs> well, guys, um, she doesn't seem to be interested in anything we currently have. How much cheap wine can we get for three bars of silver? But yeah, look at little uh, Gex Gax over there. Seems to be interested in our cart. Hey, Gax. Uh, hey, Gax. What are you doing back there? Just did, oh, I, I just bought a um, just bought one of those uh, what do they call them? Kebabs. Just need some salt. It's a little, a little dry. Okay, we'll just take that out of your ten percent. <laughs> says fine. He takes a sack. Says this is my sack. <laughs> Does he really take a sack? Yeah, he's he's yeah, taking a six. sack. Yeah, I, I, it's down to six. And he's gone for good. That that's his end of the deal. Uh, it's just fine. Uh, little guy, just before you go, can I ask you one last question? As our local, you know, information guy. Just what's that? Um, if one of us, say the halfling here or the chap with the nice sword, or even me, were to just I don't know reel off and smash your skull in, would that result in us being thrown in the river? Uh, he kind of he starts nodding and says, "Yeah, probably." If they don't kill you first. Just checking. He gives a smile. You see someone who has crooked teeth. <laughs> Is anything else? Yeah, how much do you know about tower? Uh, he says towers? Well, they on the surface world, towers are... Wait, no, don't you tower, come from the surface tower. world? You should know what a tower yeah. is. Isn't that her name, tower? Yeah, tower it is. Uh, he kind of says, oh, the, uh, the crawl over there. Yeah, she's a... Uh, She's a beast. Pretty when she takes her helmet off, though. Mostly human. She looks like an eighth orc. It's weird. Mm. Oh, you you want other information? Yeah, maybe something that we could use. He kind of starts scratching his head as well. I think that helmet thing is pretty useful. Depends on what you're into. <laughs> um, she says she's, she's as far as I know she's uh, what you call it? She's um into uh. Let's see, just one second here. 
pretty sure she's in two. She has a, a gang, and um, they usually like to poison their weapons. So uh, she's usually into poison. She'll probably buy. She'll probably buy about uh, about five of them. Probably she'll, she'll do a trade of, for about five. Uh, no, and of course she uh, she also tends to like art. It's a good. To, it's good to know. Yeah, uh, she, she, art art could be sold pretty well on the surface. So especially art from the Underdark. Pretty rare, rare player, but you guys should know that. He kind of points at you. Yeah, that. I think there's a uh, a nice pitch yeah, black we, canvas somewhere. We were just testing. <laughs> he, says, he says good. Now I'm, I'm going to go back to those drought. Alright, go get him, Slugger. <laughs> Thank hey, hypothe hypothetically, I know he's probably like five, six times my level, but I refuse to be. Um, and, um, uh, I don't do by levels. Um, yeah, health in my game is determined by race. So uh, each one of these guys probably has about 15. If they're strong, they have 20. If they're strong and a main character, they have 25 HP. So you can kill him in two shots. So what you're saying is we need to start killing people. Um. However, <laughs> they can, no. the same rules that apply to them apply to you. They can kill you in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't believe in doing the level system. I find that silly. So we now I mean, know a that powerful that wizard would, would be incredibly strong to fight, but if you sneak up behind him with a sword, he's gone. Well, one sh like one shot. Oh, that's cool. Reason. Know where I stand. Although it's obviously a debate for a future time, but I'd enjoy having it. <laughs> sure. I think so. we uh, make our way over to Drow Lady and uh, maybe pick up, a, pick up some ugly art. <laughs> And five of those poison. I mean, and some poison. Not, that uh, tower would probably buy about five. I know. We just don't know what each one is worth, but I think we can take our chances. We've already taken in plenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, recall, you're our front man with a drow, aren't you? I have been talking to many of these people. I will talk I'll to the drow if if you'd like. I mean, Orkillian can uh, apologize for how stupid his other halfling friend is and try and get us a better deal. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take a crack at it. Just remember that. Hey, back again. She <laughs> raised his eyebrow. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, we were interested in maybe uh, procuring some uh, poison and maybe that nice, beautiful canvas you have there? She gives out a smile and says, yes, this, uh, our artwork is beautiful and their poisons are deadly. So, uh, thinking maybe, uh, two bags for the art and, I don't know, three for the, uh, three for the poison, five poison? She smiles, just that sounds like a good deal. Let me uh, let me double check with my my group here. Fair well. <laughs> so what do you guys think? think yes. it sounds like the best deal we've made because it went so smoothly. <laughs> or we're getting ripped off completely. Yeah, I was thinking that's <laughs> what two and three. That's five. That leaves us with one bag of gold. Yeah, I mean enough to sprinkle on the ground in front of the mind flayer slug on our way out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll go make that deal. Cool. Uh, she she gives you the five poisons and the one piece of art you want. The uh yeah that, the, that cool that beautiful black painting. the black on black painting. Uh, oh, they I give for that one. they give you both. You now have a you, they, the the poisons come in a small uh a small kind of container, um holding five small vials, and um and the art basically they kind of wrap it up for you and hand it over to you. So it's like the equivalent of the Mona Lisa of the Drow. <laughs> Essentially. Make our way back over to the beautiful orc lady. Cool. Yes. And the cart. And him. Cool. You reapproach. Uh, 
this this guy begins to try to bulldoze you away, but she kind of stops him with her spear and pushes him back. Tower, my old friend. Um, I saw how uninterested you were in our previous wares, so we thought we would procure some new items and come back and see what you thought. This time, we've brought with us um, some poison that we heard you like so much. She says, poison, I have no use for that. I'll pay very little for it. <laughs> it looks like it's going to go on his salt. <laughs> How about some, uh, some nice drow art? Would that interest you at all? This is drow art. It's just, uh, she says, let's see it. Take it out and, uh, slowly unwrap yeah. it. Yeah, she, she, yeah, she says, uh, this, this is a, this is a very sad piece of art. I will give you <laughs> one uh, bag of saffron for it. Nothing more. Well, we can go see what Mr. Mind Flare over there wants for it, though. Is he interested in art? No. Yeah. Uh, having said that, she goes very well. Uh, I will give you one keg for it. And the saffron, or just uh, she she gives you she says sure saffron too. That doesn't that's fine with no. me I guess. Uh, Unless, this, well, I don't this, know, do you really want to? S she 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 says deal, and this guy grabs onto the painting, hands it off to this guy, and with one hand he kind of throws a uh, throws a jug at you. Well, I guess that's the deal, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she she kind of gr she grabs onto the bag of saffron, pushes against the little gnome, a uh, little goblin, uh, uh, Rickle. Yeah. Uh, and she says, "Right, well, we are we are done here." It appears it's done. She says, "Uh, but she says uh, the poison too." And she kind of uh, kind of waves her hand, like uh, I want I want that poison. I gave you the saffron. You said you don't like the poison. You don't have a deal. I said I would give you one bag of saffron for it. Yeah, but we didn't agree to that. We just sold you the painting. Mm. You see her then? Give me my saffron back. That was part of the deal for the painting. She shakes her head and said that was part of the deal for the poison and the painting. I don't believe that's correct. Mm. She kind of looks. She kind of looks over like, ah, should we discuss this with the guards? Yeah, that'd be cool. You take the first swing, and then when you're swimming in the river, we can talk about that. She says, I'm one of the people who pay the guards, along with these uh, fine associates. Oh, yeah. And they tolerate you just randomly killing people, do they? Mm. She gives a smile and says, you're, you're more clever than you look. Now get the, get the hell out of my sight. <laughs> and we scamper okay. off quite quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna back away from her now. Okay, well we... That's, the, bag only, of saffron. that's the only good thing about zones of diplomatic, like, non-combat. It covers everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be really rude to people and there's nothing they can do because they can't beat you. Okay, so we have a keg of ale now and saffron. We lost six bags or so. Not lost, traded. We have the poison still, but she doesn't want it, so it's useless now. Well, I wouldn't want to sell it to her. The first person she'd use it is us. <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> okay. So now we have another keg of ale, which, if our previous deal is anything to judge by, is worth a one bushel of spears, unless we could try and get more. But since we did one before, I don't know if we can. Any more boo, she's not going to deal with us. So that's just that. that do that. We still have the silver, though. We do still have the silver. So we have a total of five, six bushels of spears worth of trading material, and that's if we take the price that they're offering. Let's see what we can work out. Yeah, Have Adam. <laughs> so, uh, we got some nice ale for you. Uh, you see him grab a bushel and say, uh, let's do this. 
Um, Tell me what two this time. Yeah, we went through a uh, went through a lot of work to get this. Uh, thinking maybe two. You said, do you think these uh, these weapons were easy to forge? We went through work making yes. them too. Hey, you didn't have to deal with that uh that orc wench over there, did you? Uh, once again, you're not talking to Grimdar. Talking just this guy over here. Uh, just making sure you know. Um, oh, he, okay. Yeah, uh, Grimdar's the other guy. He's currently inside the the area. Uh, he says, um, I, I will, there's no way I'll take more than, um, I'll, I'll give you any more than one of these. Well, how about you go get, uh, go get your boss over there and let me talk to him instead. Says, I'm not going to waste his time with a deal like this. Yes, you are. He says, no, I'm not, as he smiles, and you see this guy back here, uh, begin to wrangle one of our spider mounts closer to you. Why does every deal have to come to this? Ask, maybe they have, like, poison? Like, what if, uh, what, what if you tell your, uh, your boss over there we got some poison for him? It sounds like you're gonna poison him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it sounds like a threat, and we have spider mounts. We don't need poison. Right, they make poison. <laughs> He makes a valid point. Plus, we still can't piss these other guys off completely. They're the ones we need the weapons on. Oh, yeah. So, you want the deal or not? Uh, um, I don't know. They seem pretty set on this price. I'm just hesitant to give it to them because there's no way we're gonna get any more ale out of that. I mean, unless I mean that's the only thing that's worth trading to these guys because I think everything else is practically garbage, or they appear to. But yeah, I mean, I guess if we want to unload the ale. Uh, I'm really beginning to think that our best option is going to be cutting our losses and just getting the best deal we possibly can. And accepting so offer the him, if you offer him the gems, silver, poison, ale, saffron, and try and get nine bushels of weapons. But if we're gonna go oh. back without with a crap deal, then it might as well be a completely crap deal and keep the damn game. Suddenly, sense has left completely. <laughs> If I could just give him everything, <laughs> yeah. take it all. And that, and that includes all of your profit, by the way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it just occurred to me, right at the start of this, right when we were talking to the guy in the beginning with the, the gnome with that gave us the salt in the first place, he actually offered to buy the cart and all the booze off you. Right there and then. He could have just walked away. <laughs> Yeah, but then we yeah. wouldn't have had this grand adventure. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I would have never met Tower, my future wife. <laughs> and we'd have like 30 things of salt. <laughs> Which, you'd have so much salt right now. It's not, salt is not worth, uh, worth nothing to me as a you guys, doctor. Either. You guys just trade from a Corvette to a plastic spoon. <laughs> so what you're saying is we're really good at trading. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> All right, well, let's just go find some gem cutting tools. Looks like this is our life now. We live here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've got enough stuff to get by for a while with all of our new friends. So, <laughs> buying a plot of land to set up a stall on will cost us money. We are very popular down here too, apparently. Mm -hmm. Well, they love us. <laughs> <laughs> One more day of trading in here, and you guys are going to end up with nothing. You're going to sell the clothes on your back. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. Which which deal? Hypothetically speaking, who? What could I get more for? Uh, Killian or a cub? <laughs> Depends on who you go to and and what you trade them as. <laughs> if you go to the uh, the big guy, he might uh. Give you something good if you if you tell them they're gems cutters or something like that. <laughs> I'll tell them master traders with silver tokens that will double his investment instantly. <laughs> are, you, are you are you dead set on not 
trading the slave, Kelbar? Honestly, I mean, th these guys say they have lots of gems. Maybe they'd be very interested in them. I know this might be particularly hard to accept, but I've bought him now, and I'm responsible for his life, and I can't. He's grown hand attached. It. Well, I haven't even grown attached to him, but I can't hand him over to a drow, a Durga, or an orc, or a fucking illithid. I just can't. You, do you think you can return him to the be a Return him to the Beholder? Did you keep your receipt? <laughs> Can't do that well, either. If we traded our 12 silver bars and our keg of ale to get 4 more bushels of spears, that would give us 5 bushels and we could come back with half of what we're supposed to. <laughs> half is better than none. But then we're gonna get the killed by a mob of gnomes. I'm absolutely shocked that he let us get walk out of there with the gems in the first place. <laughs> Plus, and I hate to say this, we are actually going to be returning with a rescued slave. And okay, sorry, he might be a slave for a little while longer. But he is eventually going to be a rescued slave. Yeah, he'll be rescued eventually. Like I, yeah, exactly. I agree. It would it, 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 probably be better to have a thankful, freed slave who's skilled than a slave who's skilled. No, he will be. Once we get there, we'll free him and he'll be happy. Didn't you guys fight the war over that theory? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, so plan? How many bars of silver do we have? Uh, you have 12. We could keep 12, 12. one case of gems, and trade almost everything else we have, keep the slave, and go back with six bushels of spears total, and then we'd have a case of gems. Well, and, uh, I, accept, sack of I accept in advance of time that I'll take a hit on whatever I was going to make out of this. For buying I was going to say, maybe that, uh, maybe that meat trader We'll be interested in some saffron, and we can get a bunch of meat and see if anybody is interested in that. You can try. If you want to run that really quick, yeah, I'm down. I'll follow you. Let's do it. Sure. Meat man. He's the one who started this whole thing. Jeez, got our friend killed. Hey, your friend got your friend killed. <laughs> He's the one who stole. And he still wants salt as well, actually. Yeah, we have a thing of salt, too, so we can... Uh, Efren, uh, Efren, the, uh, woman, dwarf, greets you. Hey, Hello, my friend. She dude. says, she says, yeah, sorry about your friend. Rickle, uh, we, we, we can't really control people, the control of the guards. If they see someone stealing, they just grab them and throw them in the lake. I was gonna let you take it, so... Yeah, we got the... Alright, so, uh, we got a bag of saffron and a bag of salt here, and... Uh, Wondering if you were interested. She kind of scratches her chin and says, "What are you, uh, what are you thinking?" Like, uh, well, what kind of meats do you have? I says, "Well, I got, I got back fat of pork and got a whole, uh, whole bunch of chickens in here. Got a couple of goats." We were gonna get an entire boar for a bag of salt earlier. She kind of sighs and says, "Very well." So we can get a boar, and uh, does anybody? Uh... Anybody know if any of these fellows like anything in specific? Um, she kind of uh, uh, shrugs her shoulders. How many, uh, how many chickens can we get for the saffron? Uh, she says she'll give you all ten of her chickens for it. Wait, isn't saffron like one of like, like a yeah, pretty yeah. expensive spice? Yeah. Okay. Not just that, but it might be one of the ingredients we need to cook the chicken. <laughs> oh. okay. uh, well, I think it's a 500 silver uh, bag of spice you're trying to sell for a two silver uh, chicken. So I'm sorry, two copper chicken. We need to get like a thousand, like ten thousand well, chickens. To be fair, wasn't that uh, wasn't that drow lady? We traded her salt, correct? True. We traded the drow salt. Yeah, maybe she'll be uh, maybe she'll be interested into the saffron since since ten chickens really isn't cutting it. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. Let's go find out. Back to the drow. Back to the drow. Bloop bloop. Uh, she says you again. And you see her? They're starting to pack their stuff up. Like. Uh, we have some uh, saffron for you this time. You uh, interested? 
Uh, she says, well, I could buy, buy a uh, healing potion. What about, uh, what about if we give you this last bag of salt, you throw in that whatever heart you have left? Uh, she says, I could, I could manage that. And she kind of snaps over uh, one of the men to bring over uh, the snake statue. Guys, sounds good to you. Well, what are we going to do with the snake statue? Unless you want to talk to the Mind Flayer again? Yeah. I don't think the Orc Lady wants to talk to us. <laughs> I'll take a crack at the Mind Flayer. <laughs> Alright, I'm fine with that. Alright, sounds like, uh... Well, just one scroll of healing? Alright, it's a potion of healing. Uh, yeah, and she, and she shakes her head and says, No, the potion of healing is not part of the deal anymore. It's just the, uh... Just the statue. For both bags of uh, spices? She nods. Ah, it's, that's a steep price. She says, have you seen it? It's bronze. Tink, tink. <laughs> Hard to make. <laughs> <laughs> Rizzle, Kelbar, what do, you, uh, what do you guys think? I think bronze is easy to work with. Don't uh, tout to your horn too loud. Traveling. Yeah, and I think if we tried selling a bronze snake to an elithid, he might think we were making some kind of joke. <laughs> hmm. Maybe we just keep the salt and the saffron as our profit and sell everything <laughs> to the guy for bushels of weapons and go home. <laughs> Sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> We've been defeated by trading. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were defeated a long time ago. Yeah. So, somewhere around the time where uh, our friend got no. thrown in the river. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the fun part for me is how this is going to advance the story for the next guys you play. <laughs> <laughs> so you're dead broke. <laughs> well, because it's a new group every time. This, I mean, this is how it's going to affect the the city itself. Oh. Yeah, it's not the group that's uh, going to be different. That's going to change. It's the city that's going to suffer. So they're going to show up and no one's going to want to talk to them. <laughs> no, it's not going to be that. They're just going to be weaponless. Uh, we'll have a boy. They'll have ten guys with weapons. Yeah, they'll have ten guys with weapons. Ten guys with weapons. As they try to take on a Mind Flayer, Beholder, uh, <laughs> Bunch of Drow. As long as they're players, they'll come up with something. Some well, sticky tape and a twig and... Yeah, but they, have to, they might have to fight orcs or something like that. All right, well, and you guys got you guys got really torn apart by kobolds, and there's more kobolds around. Uh, I say we unload the silver and the ale, and I guess even the gems to the uh, the deep dwarf or whatever you called them. Jurgar. Jurgar. Er, Grimdar. Uh, Grimdar's name. Jurgar's the race. Okay. Yeah, so sell all the stuff to Grimdar, get us weapons, that'll put as us in six, possible. six oh, yeah. I think, or seven uh, bushels, and then just keep, I guess, the salt as profit. <laughs> salt <laughs> Sounds good. Profit. And uh, our scrolls. And cool. Um, so yeah, you managed to get about, uh, about four out of them for that. Whoa, 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 Grimdar. It's supposed to be one per case of gems, one for a keg of ale, and one for every four bars of silver. Uh, he says very well. I'll give you five of them. That would be six. <laughs> uh, let's see, you have, you have three, you have, uh, three, uh, quantuplets of... of gems, twelve have, bars. Okay, cool, you're, sell, you're selling both cases of gems, okay. Yeah, it's, okay, it's so, bad. okay, cool. That'd be six then, yeah. I feel, if my party agrees, <laughs> I've been completely defeated by this trading, and I think we <laughs> well, we've been just... totally... Yeah, they, uh, they, they, they put all the, uh, all the cases, about six on there, and you have seven on there, plus a slave. Um, you, I guess you have a bag of salt left, too? We have one bag of salt, one saffron, and our oh, two scrolls of cure wound. If, uh... If we're all defeated so badly, I was gonna say, is there any chance I could maybe use my sleight of hand and sneak a uh, gem out of that box before they make off with it? I'll see you. Uh, sure. If you if you don't want to end up in the lake, if you want to end up in the lake, I'm gonna oh. hang out with Kelly. Oh. 
I'll try to, uh, try to steal at least one. You saw that then, huh? Yeah. I'll try to steal at least one gem for myself. Greed. Can you roll? Uh, 1d20 plus 4. Well, actually, B. It'd be plus 4 plus 5, because you're, uh, you're, you got expertise in it. Four, you said, or five? Plus four, plus five, so it's plus nine total. Alright. Oh, crap. Yeah, you did it wrong. Okay. Yeah, nobody noticed you. Nice. Alright, so, then, that's all gone. So we have, cool. yeah, the bag of salt, the bag of saffron, two scrolls, uh, five poison, and seven bushels of spears. And a gem. And all... you have a gem. Uh, with we, we didn't with see you 25... No knowledge of the gem. With 250 silver, that gem. <laughs> we you have guys, no knowledge you of got, the gem. You guys traded 5,000 silver for two bushels of uh, weapons. Yeah, we got burned. Horribly. Okay, uh, you guys hightail out of there? I'm trying to get out of here before they literally take everything we have. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting. Pretty soon we're gonna be trading weapons for stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, it cost, us, it's cost us a dwarf, a set of armor, <laughs> most of our goods. Well, you got fresh armor. You got some brand new armor out of it. Not to mention our dignity. Let's not. To... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've got 50 gold worth of salt. So I mean, even if we split that between us, they're not completely broke. Because we started off with just a wagon of alcohol. <laughs> uh, you guys return to here. Uh, you can see the, the the empty, empty casts of uh, spears as people line up around the block for them. Uh, these guys training against um, these gigantic um, dummies uh, meant to look like orcs, and uh, basically, it, basically, most of these guys are just kind of waiting around for a turn at even to train. Um, you kind of. Walk away with your your cash in hand, and uh, and leave forever. What about our uh, slave fellow? Oh, uh, your your slave uh, jumps out as he sees uh, Jales, uh from afar. He uh, he approaches her and hugs her, and and uh, you see them walk off together. She uh, she she yells thank you uh, from a distance as they run off. Well, I hope that that helps the group enough to make this all worth it. Because <laughs> I think we kind of did just I, I kind of figured, as soon as I realized that we were totally doomed on the getting anywhere with making a profit or getting the weapons from, that was I figured the, the best we could do is do a little good. Yeah. So, that, was, yeah. that was the game. Uh, well played, gentlemen. Yeah, uh, we tried. I've been John. Well, Ref Boss, that was cool. Yeah.